Hey, yo, it's Hans to the fucking mic, a.k.a. Mr. 40 Ounce Fridays, and frankly, I'm not impressed. The thoughts and opinions expressed during this broadcast are for entertainment purposes only. They are not facts. Now enjoy the show. What's the deal? What's the deal? What's the deal? It's episode 40 of the Not Impressed Podcast. It's your boy, Kane's World. For peace sake. And we got a very special guest in the building today. It was only right we did it for episode 40. We got Mr. 40 Ounce himself. Hazard in the building. Big Haz. Yeah, it was cracking. How Big on cardio. You feel me? Hey, one, of, <laughs> one of the best freestylers in the fucking game. We were just talking about this shit last yeah, week. Yeah, we, were, we were. I said I would put this nigga up at top five. Top five. I've ever oh, seen freestyling. I appreciate it, man. I'm not going to lie. And I don't, I don't be capping. I'm not bullshitting. You feel me? I'm not lying. Like, this nigga for real with the bars. If you haven't checked out his shit, go check out his Instagram. It's I'm a hazard. Hazard with an E. And yeah. I'm telling you, this shit, fire. fire. I'm telling you, man. He makes one. jailhouses, you know, jealous, bro. No, for real. Fucking Got Z- bars. Zanny's jealous. You feel me? <laughs> jailhouse is jealous. And this shit is crazy, man. So we really appreciate you coming in for episode 40. And we all got 40s today. Yeah, we do. Hey, we do. there we go. And we don't know, even in, be honor, in honor of it. We don't even be drinking beer like in that, but we drinking it, 40s, episode we 40. 40s. We almost did Edward Child, 40 man. hands, you know what I'm saying? We almost did. Cheers, brother. <laughs> Edward 40 hands. We I did. It we did. We did. All right, fellas. Salud, you huh? feel me? Salud. Let's take a little drink. You feel me? Get this shit cracking. Chug, 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 chug. And we were having a little bit of technical difficulties. He yes, was sir. just in his story, but he was just telling us how he uh, had a show last night. He actually came straight. From, the, from show, the show, damn near. Yeah. Here. Always working. Always you working. You know what I'm saying? Man, so, so yeah, just real quick. Um, it was uh, that boy SD Knack. Um, he's uh, from Lynn, Massachusetts. I guess it's you know, Boston or suburb of Boston. Mm-hmm. Um, he was out here. Uh, I believe this project he just did, it's, it's released through Griselda or West Side Gun, mm-hmm. you know, is, is back in this album with him or something like that. Okay, okay. Um, so he was there. He was he was he was headlining. Um then uh this dude Daniel Son. He's from um from Canada. Um uh, boys got bars. Uh, uh, my boy XP the Marksman. Big you know, eight one eight eight one eight veteran, you know. Mm-hmm. And then I was I was rocking with my boy VHS. VHS is a producer. Um he had a beat set, but he was like, yo, I just, I don't want to stand up here and push buttons for twenty minutes. You know, how about I bring the beat machine out? And uh, and you could perform, you know, and, and and rap while I play off the SP four hundred four. And I was like, all right, you know, fuck oh, yeah. it. And so you know, I was I was just telling a quick story about how I met VHS. Like he had, you know, he had DM'd me like, hey, bro, I fuck with what you're doing. Can I talk to you on the phone? And that was the first thing that was different about him. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, yeah, here's my number. We talked for like forty five minutes, and he was just telling me like, I I, I got some beats for you, bro. I, you're gonna really fuck with them, you know. You know, let me just pull up on you. This fool pulled up with a fucking portable record player, a bunch of vinyl, a fucking SP-404, pulls up to the studio, has all his shit, like, all neat, and he pulls all his stuff out, hooks up, starts cooking right in front of us. Got um, the, crate right, the crate right with him and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's crazy, dog. <laughs> and um, I just respected his um, his gangster when it came to that shit. And, yeah. uh, and he just he uh, really impressed the hell out of me. But I was saying, you know, he... He's a real like a minimalist and a purist when it comes to the the, the, the music shit. Mm-hmm. So he's you know got these real sparse you know sample loops and shit, and he's not. I gotta check some of that shit out. Yeah, yeah bro, he, bro, he's he's dope, but but he's like like minimal drumming and shit. And mm-hmm. so one time I had told him, hey, give me that loop, and I'm gonna have my boy praise uh, Danny Zeke. Oh, I'm gonna have that fool uh, uh, throw some drums on it. And like I said, you that fool. Literally looked at me like I slapped this child. <laughs> and I was like, hey, bro, if you're going to do that, then the go ahead. But, like, for our stuff, I'm telling you, just like, rock, rock with me on this. Man. Rock with I these loops. I got this, nigga. And I was just like, all right, man, fuck it. You don't want to have no drums in it. And since I'm talking that gangster shit, like, we don't call it hold the sticks. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, oh, I like that. So so probably just called hold the up. sticks. Yeah. And, and um, we're actually going to be releasing it with, like, a um a pre-roll. Um, with my boys from Street Kings, um, okay. and then uh, and Vibes Papers, so it's gonna be a Vibes Paper, um, with with two grams of premium indoor flower and a gram of uh, live rosin. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And, Stay on the uh, lookout for that. That's right. With a, and with a glass tip too. It's a little different marketing they, yeah, right there for and sure. It, and uh, it's gonna be called the Hazard Sticks. You know what I'm saying? Is, so hold right. hold the sticks and the Hazard Sticks. We're gonna have a joint um a joint you know rollout and release. We're gonna have a merch capsule. My boy Lucky. 
uh, from Cookies, my boy, our, our Big Lux. Hazard. He's gonna help me with the um with the with the with the branding on that one. What's up? Is that yeah, the guy? So. He does the podcast too, right? Lucky. Yeah, yeah. He has the I hard. Think I, he has the hard luck show. Uh huh. I'd seen some hard of the podcasts that you were on. Yeah, yep, yeah. Yeah, that's the that's the big dog right there, man. That dude, I owe I owe a lot to that man. You know what I'm saying? He that's really put up. his arms around me like a little over a year ago, that's and he's up. really given me uh, a ton of opportunities with his platform. Oh, okay. yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's it's funny too, cause you know he always tells me like, yeah, I'm just, I just I set the play I've has, but you gotta go, you gotta yeah, go yeah. right through the door and do what you, you do. That shit. But he's he's always putting me in position. That's right? the thing, uh, yeah. and that's real niggas right there though. That he'll hit me like, like hey, I need you, you like I need you at this event. Yeah, you need to be here. So yeah, I'll be I'll like, all right, bet. He'll tell me, and I, and I might I might not I might not do something with him for like a month and a half, two months. And he'll hit me, yo, has I need you here. Yeah, yeah. I right, bet. I'm niggas won't look out like that for real. Yeah, like they won't, they won't mention you if you're not even in the yeah, room. Exactly. You feel me? This fool is the opposite. Like he's yeah. telling people about me. He's like, bro, I swear, I promise you. He's like, people are are are, are dense sometimes, and it takes a lot, you know, for them to want to listen to something new. Mm-hmm. He's like, but bro, I'm sending your shit to all the homies, like, because <clears throat> he knows a lot of the people, like in the whole like Soul Assassin circle. Like he's from that crew. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Okay, Lux okay. is fr- from that era. So, gotcha. um, you know, so, so he's, you know, he's always sharing my stuff around. So I, I just, I appreciate it. Like you said, for that reason, a lot of people won't even mention you. If you're, yeah, not, yeah, if you're not there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you're not, oh, I don't know who, what? <clears throat> yeah, who, for you know? sure. He's the opposite. Like he's oh, trying yeah. to alley-oop me every chance oh, he gets. Yeah. And that's a real OG. That's why I said, yo, it was just his birthday the other day. Happy, happy belated, you know, my boy, Big Lux. Oh, yeah. Um, but I had, you know, I had posted, you know, like, you know, shout out to this dude right here because in the short time I've known him. You know, we we came at a, a very critical point in my life, you know, yeah. like professionally, you know. Yeah. And uh, he's helped me just every step of the way. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it, it went from just being like somebody that was just like a cool connect that we had made, and then like now it's like consider the dude a friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? For so sure. he's a, so sure. he's a good dude, man. Shout out oh, yeah. to my boy him. Big Lux, man. That's Big Lucky right. Luciano. And out like, of Santa Monica. I'm I'm super interested in like how you got connected with the cookies, all that shit, but. I really want the the fans and the people who don't know too much about you, you know, like yeah, let's go to, back. Let's go to the beginning. Let's go sure. to like where you from, like how it was growing up out there, like uh-huh. how you started and like how you really got into this rap shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, nah, well, you know, I was um uh like my whole family's from East LA. Uh I was born in Montebello. I went to I started kindergarten like in Montebello and then probably a month or two in, uh I got moved. Um we moved to Ontario. Okay. So I grew up in the Inland Empire. Um, that's that's where I grew up at. And uh And what what got you was, into like rapping and shit? Um, I think the first time first time I seen some shit that, that I thought was like cool was um a kid. I was in seventh grade mm-hmm. and there was a kid like at lunch or there was like a school assembly or something mm-hmm. and this fool was rapping. Like, he had a little boom box and like he was rapping over an instrumental and I heard him and I remember peeping game and like there was a couple girls that were like all oh, googly mm. eyed over on. Mm. And I was like, Oh, that's dope. You know? I need to do that shit I need right to do there. That. Mm. I can do that. <laughs> that. I can I looked at him and I I just intuitively knew like I can do that. Oh yeah. You know, and then you I said was, I was like, in what, like a seventh grade, you said? Yeah, I was in seventh grade. Okay. And then so like I just sat there and studied anything that I could from then mm. on. Like I was like, I gotta like I gotta know about rappers. I gotta okay. know what rap is in order for me to if I wanna really do this shit. So for like three, four years, I just obsessed over that. Like my seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade year. Kind of like in, in yeah. education mode and shit. Yeah, I was study, just like studying Studying music, the greats and shit. Studying music, you know, just like listening to anything I could get my hands on. And, and then, like, did you have any family that was doing music at all? Like that? No, nah, not at all. Okay. I don't think I, no, not at all. Even now, like nowadays, anybody see you, they're like, oh, I want to do this too. Any nephews, nieces? And not at all. Oh, okay, okay. No, no, that like, you know nobody. of. That you I know of. Yeah, I'm know. sure there's a lot of people on Instagram that are like, shit. I see a nigga that look like me or that's doing this shit. Well, yeah, I'm sure I there's a lot the of people for shit, sure. You know, for I'm talking sure. about like family and stuff. No, like fed off family members. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No, I've had I've had kids. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, probably yeah, have kids. Sure. Like, oh, I seen you rapping there. Like, I want to do that shit now. Yeah, one thousand percent. But like family members, no, not that I could think of. Yeah. Um, uh, no, definitely not. So like, I just I, I studied shit. And then like, I think when I was a freshman in high school, that's when you started. I tried to like playing. actually try to like step out and and rap and shit. And then um. I just fell in love with it. And I remember I was just like freestyling, rhyming, writing stuff down and seeing what I could come up with for like about another year and a half or two years. And I think the first time I recorded a song, I was like 16. Okay. So you're kind of like 
like literally in that mode of like, let me learn this shit. Let me let me kind of fine tune it. Yeah. Before I actually start to. Yeah, and it was like, and it was easy kind of because like at the same time I'm running around with like with my own voice and I'm being stupid, right, and I'm making okay. not not wise choices. But the one yeah. thing that that was always cool, no matter it, it wasn't like I fucking liked Legos or something. I couldn't play with Legos, no yeah, more, right? Yeah. I like music. Yeah. So the one thing that was always cool, and I was considered the cool guy because I always knew the new music. You know what I mean? I was yeah. looking for music, yeah. and I would always bring different shit. You're like, check this shit out. Because like, the homies would know up. about, like, a Tupac, and the homies were really big. I remember when I was growing up, the era I grew up in, it was, like, um, Bone Thugs. Yeah. Like, that was, like, the gangster music mm, at yeah. the time. Like, they were looked at like it was Bone hard, thugs, you know? Yeah. Like, that, like, that, that, that. You know, fast melodic rap mm-hmm. shit. You know, and and, um, and what did you gravitate gravitate towards? Like as far as your music selection, did, um, you, go, did liked, you go to the East Coast? I liked a lot of the East Coast stuff. Like mm-hmm. I liked a lot of premiere production. The all the West Coast stuff is like I guess by osmosis, just growing up in yeah, it yeah. and like listening to it just at parties and whatever. Yeah, I know. I know. I always thought that I would. I leaned heavily like East Coast in my in my like hip hop sensibilities or whatever. But as I got older, I realized like. Oh, I know a ton of like West Coast classic shit. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? All right, big ear pop. That, um, <laughs> I always say that I had to go to prison to understand what Pac was saying. And what I would say is, and I say that I say that to say that if anybody put, I I, I hate that it's a uh, big ear pop, Pac a big question. Mm. But if whenever anybody tries to like throw slander on a man that is too Pac, I'm a Rusha I got an so. issue with it for sure because <laughs> so, sure. I just don't. You must not have went through anything in your life yeah, for you for not sure. to understand how a yeah. uh, uh, fucking uh, how much of an icon that that man you know no, yeah. you know what I'm saying he spoke to so many different. Types I was gonna of people, say he was know? like a representation of different things though yeah. too because he had his like straight thug shit you feel me yeah but then he had his like. Let's uplift each other. And then he had to protect the women. Protect the women, you know. Then he had to fuck the bitches. Then he had then he had fuck the bitches too, right? (laughs) Exactly. But but it's like I think that I think that 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 dichotomy and those those internal contradictions is what makes him so endearing because it's like now he wasn't perfect. Yeah, for sure. You understand what I'm saying? Like now, yeah, he wasn't actually. And and for those imperfections, like we loved him more because He was vulnerable on camera. Like, he no, let us sure. know, I don't have the answers. All oh, his artistic, sure. like, the acting you know shit saying? was crazy, too. That shit is wild. And yeah. you got to, and then here's the other thing that I always try to point out, too. You just mentioned the acting shit, right? Yeah. We're talking about how much music he recorded. We talk about, you know, how much of an influence he was, how, whatever the case was. Yeah. Plus, he had legal troubles and he was locked up. And he did it all by the time he was 26 and gone. Yeah. Well, like, that's, think that's of, like, incredible. think about that. That's crazy. Like, Think about just, that, because he, yeah. he had a career that, like, a motherfucker... Would take 50 years to do. Take, yeah. And, and would be like, wow, look at, look at what, <laughs> look look at what this that person did. Yeah. Like, Drake's still trying to get that, and yeah. this nigga did that shit in, like, five years, six exactly. years. Exactly. It, it, it was, and it was over like that. Yeah, Boom. for sure. Yeah. You know what I'm so saying? You, so you said that... You, no, let's go back a little bit. You said that um, you started kind of, like, getting into the streets, essentially. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, basically. You're running around, like, you know, a little knucklehead and shit. Yeah. Um... What what do you think forced you to do that? Film? I think I think it's just because the people that you grow up with, like you go from playing like baseball together, trying to skate, and then somebody comes over and has a sack of weed, mm. and then and then you go from there to you're uh, going maybe riding your bikes like further than you would have normally because now you're getting a little older. Mm-hmm. So then you like ride your bike a little too far, and like, all off of a sudden, the porch and shit. Just... All of a sudden, there's there's kids from another side of town that you've never seen before and there's mm. tension mm. and y'all are fighting. You don't even know why. Gotcha. You understand what I'm saying? And it's like, it's, it's just a, it just, it's a natural progression. Yeah, it's kind of like the whole environment type shit. Yeah, it's a natural progression. So it's like the people that you grow up with, you see them, you know, start to do whatever. And, or sometimes maybe you're the one that's a little more advanced and you bring something to the table that's maybe not that positive. But... You guys are kids and curious, so it's like, yeah, yeah. what? What's that? That's the thing, the curiosity. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And yeah, so, curious as fuck, you know? And then that was just regular. Yeah. So, like, the whole time for me, I was obsessed with music. But that was, like, that was a cool thing to be obsessed with and still chill with my homies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like I was, like, super into fucking building, like, you know, model trains or some shit. Yeah. My homies are going to be like, what the fuck is this? Like, we're trying to go with some girls, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but me, I'm like, oh, hey, fool, I got, I got new music. 
Oh, that's yeah. dope. Like, play that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what's this? Oh, this fool's DMX. Oh, this is tight. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So you're doing a lot of that, that's introducing okay. these yeah. new acts to these people. Yeah, know, that's okay. Yeah, that's cool. You're the cool guy for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm sure. saying? But that was what I obsessed over. Got you. And then the hood shit was just regular. Yeah, it that was, was just, it was, the, it was the lifestyle because it was of the just, environment. It was just regular. And it wasn't cool. Like, the shit wasn't accepted in my home. Like, I'm not going to sit here. I was going to ask say, you that. Do you nah, have like fam that was like, so like my family, like, kind of tapped in? So my family's, they're all from East LA. And like, I got a lot of like, you know, you know, the guys and cousins, whatever, from a certain neighborhood out there. And, um, but like with, with my pops, with my mom, like they were they were strict. Okay. I'm not in the front. They were super strict, but I was a knucklehead. Yeah, it was like kind of you know like at that point you kind of uncontrollable. Yeah, sense. they were super strict. But I was you a think about how much of a kid when you're a kid, you just don't. You think you know no, it all for sure. Well, you, you got to run the streets and yeah. do whatever the fuck you want. Well, you got to think too. Like when I was little, little, my my mom and my um. And my pops both worked. And we had, like, a family friend that was living with us. She was an older Mexican woman named Lupe. And Lupe would kind of, like, watch us. But Lupe was from Mexico. like So for her, I was a, a boy. She was, like, taking care of my little sisters, right? Mm -hmm. They were babies. She's like, I'm, I'm five years old, so it was like, get the fuck out the house. Don't come back. <laughs> you you until, got you. Do not come back until 5 o'clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, you're, when you you get home, you're to be showered and waiting to eat dinner when your mom and dad come yeah. home. It's like, okay. So, so I was out running, the, I was the, out the house five, right? five and six years. Five, six, and seven, but then I remember. I like, thought I was like too crazy at eight years old. This nigga had five years no, old. No, I was five years old, bro. And then <laughs> five, five, six, and like seven. And then like something my mom had got like hurt at work or something. And then she came home. And like she started like being, being around staying home, a little bit staying more. home mom, and she was strict. Like I'll try to go. Where are you going? Mm -hmm. like, I'm going outside. Just duck off. I feel you know like a saying? big easy way too to like growing up in the hood is like older people. Like you'll be like 12, but you kick in with niggas who are 16. Oh. Yeah, that's you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's always there's 12 year olds that they might be doing their homework and shit, but you kick in with niggas who are 16 who are really in the street. Well, trying and to the other some thing, shit. and the other thing was I was always very like well spoken. Yeah. So I would say shit and the homies would laugh. Yeah. Because they'd be like, where the fuck is this about to get this no, shit? No, let's I'm keep like, this little nigga around. Hey, where's this little fool? Uh, how you, the fuck? You thought a little different and shit. Yeah, so like, they, they, they would always trip out on that shit. So they would they'd be like, say what you just said. And I'd yeah. be like, uh, I think I'm, I'm thinking I'm in trouble, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, I just said, and they'll all start laughing. Yeah. And they're like, my boy would explain to me why it was funny. Gotcha. Right? He's like, see, look, the reason why we're laughing He's like, because I'm not going to have you looking like an asshole. You got to know, too. So the reason why you're laughing is because you said this and it. And like, he, like, taught me a lot about, you know, how your words matter. Oh, yeah, yeah. Your, That's good. The tone of your voice matters. Mm -hmm. Your words matter. You know, you got, you know, two ears and, and one mouth. So you should, you know, listen twice as much as you speak. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. yeah, but he was a lot older, though. Like, yeah. A lot, a lot yeah, older. For sure. Like, you know what I'm saying? For I'm, sure. like, 12, 13. This was, like, 28. Yeah, 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 for, yeah, sure, yeah. for sure. You know what I'm saying? So he, he, in fairness, in his way, he really tried. He was trying hard to teach me a lot of the right yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. But you he's doing it with saying? the best that he has With, with the best that he had yeah, exactly. that he was trying to give me a lot yeah. of game. And that's what I talked to this nigga about plenty of times. Is like, I'm 11, 12. All my aunts and shit and their boyfriends are, like, 16, 17, and 18. And then, like, my grandma's boyfriend... Is like my grandma was like forty, but her boyfriend was like twenty eight, thirty. So this grandma nigga was crazy. This nigga was a crib. Yo, grandma was playing <laughs> that. <laughs> grandma was like young and tender, Yo, so you remember. No, oh, for real. Man. My grandma was like literally like forty, forty five, and this hey, nigga was like twenty eight. This nigga was like twenty eight, no cap. Like, girl, you look good when you back that and, thing up. And so like, I'm already kicking it with my aunts and like their boyfriends yeah. and shit. So you guys are getting into. So they're they're smoking weed. No, they're shit. They're stealing from stores. They're stealing radios. They're doing shit. So I'm like, they always wanted to bring me around because I was yeah. the one who wouldn't talk too much. You gotcha. know what I mean? I was the one who could keep it cool. Yeah. And I say shit. And then my quote unquote grandpa, he was a crip and shit. So these are the people I'm learning from and shit. Yeah. They're teaching me <laughs> shit. I'm 11, 12 years old. I'm going over there for the summer. My mom picking me up like, damn, you smell like weed. And I'm yeah. just like. Granny was putting it down. <laughs> <laughs> That's all this nigga remembers. <laughs> Granny was getting it in. Oh, shit. Hey, oh, shout, out, shout out my nana, man. Shout oh, out nana, my nana, hey, man. She's crazy. She'll shout out Linda Rule. She'll take a shot with you. Really? She'll smoke with you. Yeah, yeah I got a. Hey, Granny, let's, let's light one. <laughs> yeah, for sure. She's real cool. I have, I have a video that we did. She was supposed to be like drinking and looking at bills, crying and shit. Yeah. So I'm like, pour yourself a drink. She pours the drink like half full like this. And then starts for the shot, it. she just chugs it oh, and then says, okay, yeah. let's pour it for the shot. Yeah. And then she starts crying, dead ass, she balling for cry. the video. Yeah. Like she was doing she her shit. She turned it on for yeah. sure. She was like, 
Oscar award, uh, yeah. Oscar award. Hey, you know, she's just thinking about all the disappointments in her life, just all of it. She let all that shit the last ten years, every bad thing just all no, came out. Bro. Now she gonna be cold. She gonna be just cold blooded. No, watch. for sure, for sure. She's like, oh, this nigga whack ass song got me so, here. <laughs> so when you get into when you get into music though, um, like, do you remember like your first written dog, or do you remember like that or the attempt? first beat? You feel me? Yeah, I remember a few. You want to recite them? Not just fucking with you. He's like, no. Nah. Oh, oh, I've been nice. That's not the problem. Oh, okay, so you no, I, no, you kind of was already coming in with some heat. Yeah, I, on some different from shit. The, from the jump, that shit was easy for me. Because you kind of took a step back and just like learn. You feel me? I, I really, I cared about it. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I was saying I was a rapper before I was a rapper. Got you. I was a rapper with no rap. Got you. I rap. Really? Yeah. <laughs> he just, hey. They say fake it, you know, fake it till you make it. Because like me, shit. the first beat I ever did was uh, but this was just like I was like writing poetry type shit, like mm-hmm. tenth grade, eleventh grade type shit. Mm-hmm. What was that? And beat? Uh, it was a uh, kid cutting marijuana. Oh really? I don't know why I just randomly started writing to that shit. Really? And, uh, yeah, and I just spit a little. It was like off the little mead notebook and shit. My boy came into the room. I was like, check this shit out, bro. I don't remember what I said, but. He was like, you're good. At that time, you were hitting it. And yeah, and like, I just never rapped again for like seven years until I met this nigga. And I was like, you know, let's get it. <laughs> but no, what's crazy is um, from the jump, we were really on some other shit. We, we sat down with Fruity Loops, one of the first editions of it. It wasn't FLC. It was Fruity yeah, Loops. Yeah, literally. Fruity Loops. Uh, we're on, the demo version or was we're it? On, I, to be honest with y'all, I'd be lying if I told, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> this nigga had that stolen shit. I definitely had the demo version. We were, on, sure. we were on Fruity Loops and my boy made the beat. And then we sat there and wrote raps. I wrote a hook for it. And then um, we actually like recorded it. And hearing my voice back for the first time, I was like hooked. All right, as soon as you heard it. I was like, oh, because usually tight. people hear their voice are like, shit. Yeah, for sure. For a while, this nigga. For me, in. I was trying to get my my voice right, get my language. He would, shit. He would like, hey, turn off the headphones type shit. Oh yeah, know? at first I was like, I don't want to hear myself feedback. But yeah. I feel like that's most people. At first, they don't want to hear the feedback because it kind of almost like an echo. Yeah, yeah. But once yeah. you get the practice with it, and you get it. You're like, okay, that's yeah, necessary. Yeah. I need yeah. to hear that shit. Yeah. So you guys put together a record. At what age you say? I was like sixteen. Okay, sixteen. So you said from 12 is when you kind of like got introduced to it. Yeah. And then up and so it's like four years, just kind of like in the cut writing rhymes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And I was just like, I was addicted though. Like I, I was, we would, I remember we would like sit the way I kind of got my workflow, like having to accomplish it when, when, we're, when we're working was because <clears throat> my boy would come in. I think we were using like a demo version. It would be the full version, but you could only open it three times or some shit like that. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So so we would have to come in. He would have to make whatever he could make, you know, beat wise. Right. If he could make one, two or three beats, whatever. But I think sometimes you could only export maybe like three or whatever. Mm-hmm. But we would sit there. and Oh, no, no, no. This is, I remember how we, we would do it. It was bootleg as hell. We would. <laughs> We had we had a computer mic and we had the speakers pointed towards the computer oh, mic and we were rapping. Record that shit, like yeah, that. bro. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And and so we had to do it live. So I, I would use sound recorder. So you had to be fucking like perfect, right? Oh, straight up window sound yeah, recorder shit. Bro. I remember that. And I remember was, that, bro. And it was fucking crazy because <laughs> I remember. You're probably hyped as fuck when you first heard that, though. We we would record maybe like we would record like a whole EP like in a day. Shit. Right, making beats and then we record and then bounce that one, and then make another beat re- record oh, yeah. over that. Oh, yeah. But I'm like, we're talking about full writing and recording the whole thing. Yeah, and that was how I, that was how I started developing like my 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 creating style because yeah. I had to be quick with it. that work ethic right there. I had to be like real quick with it, you know. And I, I realized also that if I was reading it off the paper, it didn't sound the same. Mm. So I had to learn how to like I would write my rhymes down so I wouldn't forget them. But I'll like read the paper. I'll read mm-hmm. the paper, and then I'll like recite it away, uh, so that by the time it was my turn to actually go, I'm, I would just have just the paper go. just in case, like I, you know, mm-hmm. needed a reference. But I, I wouldn't read off the paper. It gives it a different feeling too. So no, sometimes for sure. when for you're me, like, for sure, like when you're when you're when you're reciting that shit, you can get to that read mode. Yeah. Compared to just freely, like freely, kind of like letting that shit come through you, it's, yeah. it's mm-hmm. definitely different. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely different. Um. I wanted to ask you, um, talk about your first written. You didn't really go into it, but you you did. You thought it was hard. 
I thought it was dope. I, yeah. I think do you still so. have? Do you have any of those old records like sitting somewhere? In the, I don't think I have any of the CDs left. No. That, I'm like, that I'm would, like we got to pull up the archives. I don't <laughs> think I don't think I have. <laughs> any. You have that shit on CD, homie. Yeah. You ain't got nowhere to play it. Yeah. Fuck. I don't. Right? <laughs> we fucking play that bitch up. I don't even know. Hey, but I know that I know it could get deep, and there's a lot of you know politics and whatnot and shit that goes into it, but. You know, there's a lot of people that listen to this and shit that kind of go through the same kind of things we go through, you know, or that you go through and shit like that. And is there, is there anything you could share with us when it comes to like, you know, some of the trials and tribulations or some of the the shit that that kind of stuck with you when you did go to prison? Because you said you did do some time, you know, mm-hmm. in the past. Like, is there anything that you could like share with the people? Maybe if even there's somebody out here watching this, is like, I want to do something more, but this is where I came from. And they don't think they could kind of elevate and they just want to, you know, maybe connect with you and, and understand. Yeah. So, um, I would say probably the toughest thing I think was one, having to have a sense of accountability. You know, I don't care how bad, um, you feel like maybe you got the raw end of a deal, like with a case or whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. Um, Like ultimately, you know, 70% of the time, if you go all the way through and you're found guilty and you're going to do the time, even if maybe you're not guilty of exactly what they said you did, you were doing something like kind of morally wrong. Most likely, right? Most likely. You know, allegedly 70%. And I'm saying if you're guilty and actually, you know, you, 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 Cop to it, whatever the case is, right? You plead it out, whatever, because you knew it some in some way you were kind of yeah, yeah. you're kind of guilty, right? Um, so the first thing I would say is like that self accountability, like all right, yeah, I I've made some choices that have kind of put me here, yeah. even if somebody else maybe set me up or did me dirty or told on me, whatever the case is, forget all of that. Yeah, I made certain decisions that ultimately landed me here. All right, cool. accountability and for sure. and I, you know, and and I now want to change my life yeah, for the sure. better for me. Mm-hmm. And the reason why you can't do it for, you shouldn't do it for a family member or whatever the case is, is I had this dude tell me this. He had um, he was running amok. He was like a real fool in his neighborhood. His wife got pregnant, had a, a baby boy. He was like overjoyed about it. And he just walked away from his neighborhood. He's like, hey, bro, I got to go raise this kid. Like, this is the most important thing I've ever done. And I can't do it here. I'm sorry. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm done. Left the hood and, like, went to go raise his son, live all quietly, whatever the case is, working, you know, working a job, the whole nine. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he uh, woke up one morning and his son was blue. He had passed away. Oh, um, shit. And... Instantly, the whole reason for him to have had his whole life changed was gone. Was gone. Damn. He went right back to the hood. He said, literally, like, he walked out the house and just went to his Went head. right to the block. And then, like, he was on a, on a crazy one for, like, a year and a half, and he got popped again. And then he was, like, the calmest dude in there, and he was, like, you know, yeah. at that point, you know. And I was talking to him about it, and he had because I told him, like, you know, I got, a, I got a baby, and I got to try to do right, and blah, blah. And he looked at me. He was like, nah. No disrespect, youngster, but you ain't gonna you, you ain't gonna, you're gonna you. figure it out until you're willing to change yeah. for you. Yeah, that's a fact. You know? So that's a really long, shit. long-winded shit. way of saying like you got to take accountability for whatever might have happened in your life mm-hmm. that didn't that didn't go right because of your actions. It don't matter how bad of a hand you had. Like at certain points, you were faced with choices, even if they were really difficult ones. You you still had choices, right? Oh yeah, and that comes with everything. Whether you know, it be, that, uh, whether it be that, cases, that's. That's, pretty much everything. That's life, right? Yeah. And so so what I would say more than anything else is like, okay, I'm I'm past it. I'm not mad at the world no more. I, I my my freedom and my my peace of mind is more important mm-hmm. than like holding a petty grudge or whatever the case is. Yes, sir. And then, you know, just push forward. Um Yeah, that kind of be real. It's not gonna be that. easy, bro. You gotta and I'm gonna be real. <clears throat> There's always a um a lyric from Nipsey that I always kinda laugh at because I understand what he meant, but at the same time, for me, I'm like, I got a little bit of a different viewpoint. But um, I think Nip said, you know, never let a hard time humble us. Mm-hmm. And I, I know what he meant. Like, you know, if he runs into something, he's not going to stop being, you know, his Who authentic self. But he's you need still those. Gonna hold his head up. He's still going to whatever. 
But my thing is, um, I also feel like, you know, in certain situations, you need to humble yourself, mm-hmm. you know, because it's not all about you. You got to mm-hmm. sit down. You know what I'm saying? You sit gotta, down sometimes. Yeah, I gotta, yeah so, so, you know, I, I respect, I always respect that line. I know exactly mm-hmm. what he means, but I feel yeah. like the polar opposite, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. And I would say that. That's probably the biggest one. You have to humble yourself a little bit. But I think he means in circumstance. You feel I, me? Like, yeah, you got to stay humble, but also he means, like, if you got not get knocked down, remember, you you're still shirt. a king. You're still that dude. Yeah, you're still a king you're whether you're in a, yeah. in a Versace but, shirt. But sometimes or, you got to feel it, though, I feel. No, no. And that, that's what I'm saying. sit down yeah. and just kind of, like, That's what I'm saying. I just feel think it by that bit. line, I don't think he meant you don't be humble. I think he meant, like, no. whether you're in a Versace shirt or a ripped white tee. Right. You still that nigga, and yeah, you feel I, me? Yeah, and I, keep I, on I the rock path. That. You yeah. feel me? Yeah, I rock with that. And and I think that, um, you know, that's what I would say more than anything else. It's going to be tougher. You're going to have to take the long way, you know, because you, you know, might have stole the elevator and well, th- jerry-rigged it for, for it to do whatever it was going to do for you. <laughs> and then now you got to go take, you know, you got to go take a double set of stairs. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So And, and it might be hard, and you have a bunch you're of like, baggage on your like, back. like, how high right now? You know? <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh yeah, shit. he's like how high I'm and shit. To like, pass it like this. oh my smoke, bad. Stroke, smoke, stroke, stroke. No, I fuck with. I wanted to ask you this too because you know I, I was listening to Big Dreams and shit, and you know you talked about like going to prison and stuff. Um, you have a line in there, you know, where you talk about being in prison mm-hmm. uh, during the first five years of your daughter's birth. Uh. Um, I wanted to ask you like, how did that affect you? You know, while you were in there and shit. Like, what do, what do you, what is your mindset like? Like this is it? I'm gonna get the fuck out and do it right, or what is it? How, how are you there? Well, it was a, it was like a lot. It was a lot with that, and um, at first it was more like, um, it made me mean. It made me cold because I didn't have contact <laughs> with with my daughter for like maybe about a year and a half, a two year stretch in prison. I had no idea where she was, and it was a whole lot. There's a whole backstory oh, yeah, so with I mean, that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, it made me cold, bro. It made me real mean. And um, you were kind I of lashing had, out in prison and shit, or I had well, well, it's it's hard because you you really can't because you're gonna you know you gonna Program. you gonna bump your head into something right, yeah. but it just made me it made me cold like I was just kind of like <coughs> very cold hearted, very cold hearted and very like 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 callous you know it's inside mm, mm. I was just like man it's whatever like whereas before I would try to focus on like oh I got to get out I got to do mm-hmm. good I got to a point like man whoever. Whoever, whatever issue, fuck it, bro. Yeah, you know Let's what? Run it. Let's I'll run it, dog. If squabble. you need help, you know what I mean? If you need mm-hmm. help with something, let me know. If you need, you need me to fucking book somebody, I got some know. extra energy. Yeah, and it was like that. It's kind of like, let me let me uh, redirect this energy. Yeah, mm-hmm. bro. Right there. It, was, it was like that, bro. And, and so there was a good, like, two-year stretch where I didn't hear nothing from her, and it was, it was fucked up. And that's so that would, that's what I would say more than anything else. Like, that that time was like, it made me a kind of a terrible person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kind of made you into a terrorist and shit. Like, I mean, for good reason, though. I mean, like, you like, you know, you, emotions, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you go through them and shit, you know? And there's That's the thing about it, though, too, is, like, there's, like, li- like different, like, like phases of it, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, the emotions sure. and shit, you probably had, like, the angry, bitter emotion. Then the sadness maybe crept in and shit. Like, damn, like, I'm missing out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I, I ask you the second, like, kind of leads into the second thing, though, like, how was it adjusting when you do get out and you do see your, you know, like, did you have any contact like prior? Like, did you meet her? Did you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was there when she was born and then I was, and then I was in and out um, for a second, like in and out the County. And I, I seen her on the day of her first birth. Okay. Um, and that, but that was it. No, no other holidays or no other birthdays. <clears throat> mm-hmm. so, for like another four years. Yeah. So she turned six, but, um, so I had, I had, um, I did have, you know, some contact with her, whatever, you know, those those few limited times. And then what happened was, um, you're saying how how was it adjusting when I came home, right? Yeah, how did you adjust? Like, 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 was it difficult to like now like mend that relationship? Like, like, is there that instant love? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, sip on sip on it, bro. Hit it a couple yeah. times. Is but, it like is it like an instant? You know what I'm saying? Like, like. I could feel that there could be like a disconnect, you know, when it when when like a parent's gone and then all of a sudden they pop back up type shit, you know, like. But before you answer, I want to know with that situation particularly, how was it reconnecting, and then also with life in general, like how was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah reacclimating exactly. to to life, reaccustoming and shit. I'm like, tell you, I'll tell you three stories. Well, the first one with my daughter, um, when I when I came home, she I had like kind of. There was, like I said, there was a lot to it. 
Um, but basically, I had ended up having the opportunity to kind of work some magic from behind bars, and I was able to get in once I got in touch with the courts. Bring the um, mic a little bit closer to him. Like this? Yeah. Like this? Okay. Yeah, you're good. So once I got in touch with the courts, um, I was able to kind of speak with a caseworker and um, understand the situation. And once I once I did that, I was able to figure out um, what I could do for my daughter. Um, while being incarcerated? While being incarcerated because she was kind of technically a ward of the state. I mean, okay. She was like four years old. So I ended up kind of having some conversations and whatnot, and then um, my daughter ended up going into a, a, a temporary guardianship with my mother. Okay. So when I when I came home, I had I had mind you I hadn't been living with my mom in, in, in a lot of years. I was in prison, and before that, I had moved out young. Okay. So, but you know, my mom had helped me, and you know, she had gotten guardianship of my daughter. So I came like home. You know okay. what I'm saying? To I parole to my mother's house, and the, in the morning, uh, the morning that I finally left, um, I had a razor blade in my waistband because I was going to court and I didn't know anybody, and so I had like a razor blade in case you know, just ready in case we had an issue or something. And um, I uh, that night, I. Uh, was home to get my daughter ready so she could take a bath. Okay. You know what I mean? I had, a, I had a razor blade in my waistband in the morning. And that night, I'm like, get my daughter ready. Bed. And so, I always say that it was a blessing, but at the same time, it was like super, like, shock to my system. Because I, yeah. I went from every day <clears throat> having to be super on point, mm -hmm. whatever the case was, to, to all of a sudden I'm home. And I and the thing is, I was expecting to go home, but I wasn't sure because I had a I had a second case at L.A. County, okay. and I just wasn't sure if I was going to come home <laughs> right away or if I was going to have to sit for a little bit or whatever the case was. How how much time were they trying to give you? Do you know so, what I'm asking? Well, so I had been I had been sitting for five already, and I had this old case, so it was kind of a tricky thing because technically it was an old case, mm -hmm. but it would have been my third strike under the California three strike law. Shit. So at first. That at first, like the first offer or whatever, was something like, "Well, since this is a third strike, I knew he was gonna read the case file kind of wrong." Yeah. He's like, "Well, since it's a three strike case, the only offer I'm willing to give him is thirty with no L." Shit, you know what I'm saying he was like, he was like, Damn. He was like I can't imagine hearing that." Thirty shit. years no L, and he goes, "Or he goes, or we can go to trial, and I'm seeking life." Damn, you know he said L WAP, you know, life without the possibility of. Parole. Fucking a. So that was his first day, but he didn't read the case file. The, the, the case was from before I had gotten my second strike, so it's mm -hmm. kind of this weird thing. Mm. Um, but still, like he was trying to push it first. Like he was talking, he was saying, "If not, cause we could just go to trial. It's a three strike case. We could strike him out." So that's what they're looking for. It's like a baseball mm -hmm. game to them and shit. Like, yeah. Let me see how many numbers I can get out. Fucking of Fucking crazy. So. So, yeah, so I wasn't sure if I was coming home, like, yeah. if and when I was coming home. So mm -hmm. it really was kind of a culture shock. Like, uh, in the morning, like I said, I got a razor blade in, my, in, my, in the waistband of my, my pants to go to court. Mm -hmm. And then that evening, I'm sitting with my daughter. Yeah, that's that's kind of like a crazy you know what I'm saying? comparison and shit right sure. there. Because you go from being like this hard... Kind of like I gotta be on my on just, point, just yeah. in case. So now shit. you're going to this like nurturing, yeah. You know, with a daughter, like, because you know, like, I don't have kids, bro, but I have a lot of nieces and nephews, and yeah. with my niece, you know, you're like a lot more softer. Yeah, you know? and 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 so that was that word. I remember um, <coughs> telling you like, <coughs> um, the world in general, right? I was um, I was with my boy, um, got beats. He's I've done a lot of work with them in the past, and um, continues to work with him but I was chilling with this right when I got out we're at a gas station grabbing like some drinks or whatever um, we're getting like I think we're getting some like, energy drinks and like maybe a case of some kind of beer or something we're standing in line and uh, the two registers open one of the clerks goes you know he points at me waves me over so I go but then there was another gentleman that I guess he 
Yeah, he thought he Clark, was next. Clark didn't realize that he was in line. Uh-huh. He thought he was standing looking at something still. Mm. So then he cuts me off. He's like, yeah, you don't see me standing here? And I'm oh, like, shit. And I was like, I was like, hey, man, he, um, man. You know, he pointed at me. And then he goes, he goes, well, I told he said, well, you see me standing here? And I was like. You just have to suppress that shit right there. <sighs> well, I, I, I'll never forget it. I literally went like that. I closed my eyes and I was like. He did that. We saw <sighs> real quick just. And I'll never forget that the gentleman goes, hey, hey man, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean nothing by it. Uh, just like that. He got like real quiet. And I know my, my boy told me after. He said that my eyes went like black. Oh, I just looked shit. at him. He said, he goes, bro. That shit was scary as fuck. He goes, what the hell? You look like you had he straight to, turns to exorcism. You look like you had the true. devil in you, bro. My boy Warren told me this shit. And he's like, God, hey, possessed like, right there, bro. And I just remember, I remember thinking like, oh, this is different out here. Yeah. Like people, people are gonna offhandedly be disrespectful. Yeah, mm-hmm. They're just gonna do it because that's their that's their like standard said, protocol. Go in here inside. These niggas are trying to disrespect because they're trying to squabble. Get yeah, up. it's like no. You if you in there, you don't do that. There's a lot of respect for my Because it'll air. cause a, it'll cause a, you. You are gonna cause a 300 man war. No, yeah, sure. yeah, it ain't no one on one nothing. No, for sure, nobody's sure. nobody's giving no heads up in there. Yeah. Man, period. Yeah, for sure, You're gonna sure. go start a 300 man <laughs> rumble. You so know what I'm saying? To... So you you gotta be. Excuse me. Thank you. It's very courteous. Everybody says respect. I always say courtesy. Yeah. I say yeah. the jail and prison is about you know personal space and courtesy where yeah. you can, where you can allow it. And that little bit of courtesy is is so paramount and important that people equate it to actual respect or disrespect. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you bumped me and didn't say excuse me. Yeah. Oh, so you think I'm a bitch? Pretty yeah. Much. Okay, yeah. I'm a fucking punk, huh? Because yeah. oh, okay, all right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's like, sure. so it's 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 ta- it's escalated all the way there. I think one of the biggest. You got, you got all this. You got all this testosterone trapped in one place. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. All these frustrations. Everybody's going. You know what I mean. You everybody's going. Everybody's going and, and, and not sure, not to mention sure. the system makes it fucked up for you though too. Yeah. Because you're 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 almost like starved, essentially. I hear the food in there is terrible. Garbage. You know, you're so you're not getting the proper your the proper nutrition. Think about when you're hangry, nigga. No, for sure. That alone right there. Niggas that are straight up. Think about when you're hungry. Yeah. No, for sure. That got your temper already like yeah. up to here. You feel me? Hunger, yeah. sleep. Uh, sleep deprived. Hunger. You know, like that shit right there, they kind of make it where it's just well, like, too, let's let's turn these niggas into animals. He, he's telling us how he feels like, how he's feeling just about, you know, his whole daughter situation while he's locked up. Now think about there's hundreds of people in there all going through all the same. similar That's things. That's what I'm saying. You know? nigga, then you had that. Any then given that. day, nigga, I'm you know? feeling some type of way. Somebody gonna feel it. You feel me? Right, and that's the thing, right? And so what I what I had to learn, you know, with that second situation, what about the gas station? I had to learn that people are just offhandedly just disrespectful. No, for sure. Mm-hmm. And so and so you know I I just I um, you know that would be that would be answering that one. Then what was the third one? I feel like you asked me. No, no, you said you had you three said stories. You had three stories yeah. Oh, I had three. Oh, I had three stories. Okay, yeah. And then the last one, I was um, working. I had just moved to the valley, and I was working at a um, at a uh, supermarket, like bagging groceries. I was just, I just needed to have a job. Oh yeah. And I was still on parole, so like, they could violate your parole if you're not actively mm-hmm. applying for jobs. Mm-hmm. So I applied every motherfucking where, and then the first job that like hired me was you know sitting at this grocery store but um the grocery store's management was like blatantly racist and they made a lot of like anti anti mexican american anti mexican what store was it what kind of store Cobb, oh, i i i won't even mention uh, it. <laughs> but it's a grocery store and uh like a local chain kind of but um they they were like racist like a, like blatantly fucking racist with a lot of different stuff and um, I spent my time there, like thinking I'm gonna go back to jail. <laughs> like I'm going, every day you I'm walk in there, you're like, jail. today's the day I'm going today's back. Today's the day I fucking go to jail <laughs> just for me sure. trying to keep a punk ass job. Yeah, you know, but yeah. but um, what well, was, was it like? Man, was it just management was just crazy with it? Like there it was, wasn't coming from like the employees. Was it coming from like an upper? Yeah, it was coming from the management. And some of like they had some family. They were all kind of in management and their mm. cousins or whatever. That'd be the thing too. Yeah, and they were just it was just like blatant, you know, kinda just real just real flagrant disrespect. Like mm. not not where I was like, Am I tripping? No, <laughs> yeah, there was like yeah. flagrant disrespect. And what I learned, you know, what I learned about myself then was instead of just being like, all right, you know what, I'm gonna go back to work. Next person says something stupid told me I'm a bomb on. I started like 
I started like really being very mindful, completely keeping to myself, wouldn't talk to anybody, yeah. wouldn't give anybody an excuse to come mess with me at all. I was just quiet. Um, and then I just started kind of like applying for other jobs everywhere I could. That's what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? And then like uh, I had a homie with, with, with a plug. He ended up, you know, putting me on some, on some like real money making stuff with some construction stuff, whatever it was oh, yeah. at the time. But um, but yeah, like th- that was when I learned right there. I was like, yeah, I'm really willing to like just kind of like turn around and walk away and ignore the nonsense. Yeah, you know, that shit. Sure. That te- you know like being able to control that temporary emotion, dog. Yeah, that's kind of what it is. Like, it's it's, really, yeah. think about your emotions. A lot of them are temporary. No, for you sure. know. So if you could kind of just do some woo saw shit, just no, for sure. At the end of the away. day, at the end of the day, you're a man. You yeah, know, you feel me. You got to be respected as a man. Yeah. But also, as you get older, you start to learn that, like, you feel me. There's a power in not letting people control your energy and shit like that. That, that right and there. And like you said, that right making there. that move and deciding, all right, I'm, I got to make my move for what's best for me. I yeah, can't yeah. let another motherfucker trick me out of Your what shit. I got going or what I'm Hell doing. Yeah. So there's a power to that. You feel me? When you learn, like, basically. <clears throat> This, I can't react off of every every situation. That's the thing, right? That's reaction, right. man. Because I'm just getting the L. My win is, yeah, I get to fuck a nigga up. Yeah, but yeah. After that, it's all L's after that. Hell yeah. You yeah. feel me? Yeah, absolutely. So let's jump into, uh, you know, this the music stuff, man. Like, you've been doing it for a minute, you know. Uh, you started doing shows and shit, you know, back in the, like, I remember seeing you out there, like, 2014 heavy doing shows and shit. Mm-hmm. Riot days. Mm-hmm. Um like what? What happened? Like, because I mean, it, it's definitely consistency. It shows that consistency works, right? Like, yeah. just being consistent it works and shit. But what really popped it off from you? Was it that like, like the TikTok stuff, or was it already kind of bubbling? Hello. Excuse me. There you go. I was done making music. I was like done, done. So I was real heavy. 2014, 2015, I dropped Starter Riot. Mm-hmm. Um, and right when I had like kind of a little underground, um, hot single as. As hot of a single as you can have on Underground, right? Okay. Like, local scene, everybody was hearing about this song. I shot a real cool video for it. And then I got, um, I, I uh, had uh, pinched my sciatic nerve, and I couldn't walk, mm. like, most days. Really? I couldn't even get on stage, bro. And Shit. I would, I would be finished, and I would just feel like my back was, like, twisted. And it was nice. no more jumping around with Riot, nigga, at that, that point. None of that. So I had just stopped. I had tapered off. I got real sad. And I was just, okay. to be real with you, I felt sorry for myself. And I was like, oh, this is this is bullshit. I finally figured out a lane. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? With these, like, protest songs. And people are rocking with me and mm-hmm. I'm getting to touch people. And they're telling me how, how it's affecting their life in a positive way, in a powerful way. Yeah. And I'm just loving that. I'm having an impact with something that I thought was pretty fucking positive, you know? Yeah. And then, like, boom. You know, hurt my back, and I just felt sorry. For, I ain't gonna front. I felt straight sorry for myself. Oh, this isn't fair. Why me? Why I I did everything right, and now look. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Felt sorry for myself, so I just like you're about like, to just. I just hang yeah, it up. I kind of stopped, and then um, and then I was trying to get custody of my daughter, and uh, that was like a real headache, and it was like the court was being stupid, mm-hmm. and uh, my daughter. Everybody's saying yeah, he needs to live with she needs to live with her dad. My daughter's like I want to live with my dad. And, of mm. course, like, mm, well, let's see about that. You know, and it was weird. They always side with the women. Look, it's it was, crazy. It was, it was wild. It was, it wasn't even. That's it. <laughs> the whole story was wild. But that being said, um, I ended up, you know, with custody of my daughter, and, and when I got custody of her, my boy, um, Urban from All Angles, was like, "Hey, bro, I got some beats, bro. Like, I made some stuff. I need you to rap on these beats." And I said, "I'm not, I'm not even rapping." Like and now, come on, man. I got these beats. Come on. So he came through and showed me a bunch of beats and shit. And I was like, oh, this is tight. I had to, I had the itch. I was like, oh, I want to record. Went to, his, went to his pad. I was recording in his room. We recorded like eight, ten songs, something like that. This is hard, fool, but. I kind of just kind of like re, re-sparked that shit for yeah, you. Yeah, but I, I, but I told him, look, this is all hard, bro. I love this shit, but like, we're not going to get nowhere with it because I don't have a fan base. You're doing the same thing over and over. Mm, mm. I don't got this family, bro. So I said, hey, let's start doing it. Let's do something like, you know, you know what? I had this one video where I was like, blackout drunk in the homie Praises apartment. Uh, oh, yeah. Zico. oh, yeah. And they had like done numbers for me on Facebook. Shout, Facebook, out, like, shout out Mitch right there. Shout there. out Mitch, there man. Too. Mitch right there, too. Mitch, my boy, Bunny Mitch. I met Mitch through my boy right here. Yeah, cool nigga, for yeah sure. man. R.I.P. Mitch, man. Yeah. Sure. Uh, 
I miss Mitchell for real, man. For and, real. And so the thing was, was um, that video had done kind of well for me. So I thought, what if we did that every week? I drink a 40 of Mickey's and I will call it 40 Oh, is that what really popped it off? Yeah. That's crazy. I said, let's do this and we'll do like a weekly. We'll do like a weekly and then and then it'll promote like me and more people will pay attention and we'll drop a Friday. Mm. And he was like, okay, bet. Man, we still ain't put out the fucking music. God bless Urban, man. He never, he never bothers me about it. But he's, crazy. I still got unreleased shit with him. It's heat, and it's not. It's not that the music's not good, but I just feel like I really feel like that dude helped me so much that I want to release that when I have like a real crazy platform. This way, that man can eat. You know what I'm saying? Like gotcha. I, want, I want my boy to be. Able You're to like, eat. let me keep on getting this. Yeah, up you know, and in the so, eyes. Yeah, you know. So, so that being said, um. You know, we started 40 on Fridays and then it just took off. It started like it, it had like a, a, a life of its own. And it was small still. You know, I think when we started 40 on Friday, I was like, I had less than a thousand followers and I maybe, maybe seven, eight hundred followers. So that video that you had dropped on, on TikTok that went viral, uh-huh. you had dropped that previously on Facebook. On Facebook and right. it did numbers? It did numbers. I think it did like 15K on a personal page. Okay. Somebody had picked it up and had done like, 50k but that kind of just set off like okay let's do the 40 ounce yeah. fridays so so then um we were doing it for like two and a half almost three years uh 40 ounce fridays like two and a yeah, half yeah. almost three oh, yeah. years and then my buddy was telling me bro you need to be on tiktok you need to be on tiktok mm. i'm like the fuck i'm gonna do on tiktok bro i don't i don't fucking you know i don't, I don't dance know this, shit. Shit, this nigga. i don't dance your shit you know and he's <laughs> just like <laughs> he's like Oh, for sure. You know, he's like, well, nah, if you put up your videos, you rapping. Like, they'll do well. Nah, I thought he was out of his fucking mind. So I put one up, and it did fucking kind of well. Like, it got, like, 50,000 views and, like, you know, thousands of some likes and hundreds of comments. And I was mm-hmm. like, Did oh, you? Shit. I think it was, like, a Make It Clap, or was it the... I did the, yeah, Soldier Boy. She made Soldier Boy Make It Clap. I yeah. did that one. Banger. And then... And then I put up like two, three more. And then I was like, you know what? I should put up that one video that went crazy for me on Facebook. Yeah. And then. Bro, the, one of the lines in there, man. Pesky rabbit. All that shit. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So I put that bitch up and it was gone, bro. Yeah. Was like, I'll never yeah. forget. Just I was like, yo, I think I might have hit jackpot. Yeah. And we did. I posted something that afternoon. And by midnight that night, it had like a million views. You remember yeah. that bar? <clears throat> the pesky rabbit bar. Fuck a wascally wabbit. I kill a whack wapper and tax him for his bank account. It's looking like a rap's past. <laughs> That's right. That's I knew right. this nigga was gonna know it. He be having that shit like an encyclopedia. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Right now he had like a little minion in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that shit was yeah so it's like it's, it's like it was and it was luck, bro. Like it really was. It was, it was consistency yeah, though, you know. Sure. Like, yeah, because then I had I was able to take advantage of being lucky. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But but I was definitely lucky. Like it was, it was just dumb luck. Yeah, but even when that happened, you had like 160 caught. fucking episodes already of the 40 on Spotify. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's like, that's what I'm saying. I was, I was ready to take advantage of that luck. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. And, and that was where, that was where I was able to really kind of push. Right. Um, and and um, you know, I definitely was lucky because I still to this day I like I sometimes trip out like, how the hell. You know what I mean? Like, how the hell does shit even happen? Like, I don't, my, none of my stuff fits their algorithm. Yeah. Like, I've been, I've violated so many, like, guidelines so many oh, times. Yeah, yeah. I'm TikTok like, guidelines, bullshit, I'm like, some shit. Bruh, come on, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, sure. I don't, you know, I don't go alive over there a lot. Like, yeah, yeah. I've done everything that they say not to do. No, yeah, we were yeah. just yeah. talking about that shit recently, too. I was saying that, like, part of blowing up, honestly, it, it is hard work, it is consistency, but. A lot it's of this luck. luck. Like, <laughs> certain sure. niggas, like, niggas don't just become Drake because there's, there's a lot of niggas that are making music in Toronto that yeah. didn't get that. You yeah, feel yeah, me? Yeah. Like, that are never going to see When we were talking about the fighters level. and shit, you know, they yeah. put in a lot of work 6 a.m. getting up. <laughs> yep. They still don't get that big fight. No, you know, sure. they still ain't fighting Flame Mayweather. Sure. You know It's what like saying? all about the just where you happen to end up at the right time. Yeah. yeah. Just it's timing, you know what I mean? It's timing, too. There's all that. I think, <clears> I think if you do it long enough, it, oh, that's also the other thing. You got to stay in it. For sure. If you do it long enough, and you're, it's a marathon you, for sure. You really are. If you really are good, though, that matters. Like I don't care what anybody oh, says. Yeah, that yeah, fucking yeah, matters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If sure, you do it sure. long enough, and you have like that baseline level of goodness to yeah. what you the fuck yeah. you do, 
you're gonna get a chance. There's gonna be some point where the timing will line up. Yeah. The mm-hmm. only reason timing won't line up is if you're not consistent. So maybe during one of your break periods, some shit was really popping that you could have took advantage of, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's either that or like you're fucking up. Like it's usually drugs. And if you keep doing it, I your... keep it. A, you know what I'm saying? I keep it a bug. It's no, usually it's drugs. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Substance, man. Substance fuck people substances, up. Substances, you know, will, will fuck people up. So. You know, that's what I've realized, though. If you do this shit long enough, bro, now, because now hip-hop's getting older, <clears throat> right? You, we just, we're celebrating 50 years this year, What right? do you think about the state of hip-hop? Because so, I heard it's not on the top charts. I think, well, that's just, like, that's commercial. There has not been a commercial release that's charted on Billboard, right? That's what I hear, yeah. Yeah, I think it's because people are trying to chase a TikTok trend. They're trying to mm, chase a trending mm. sound instead of just focusing on the music. Yeah, yeah, like a lot of people, you know, they say they love Thriller. Oh, look how many Grammys it won! Look how many units it sold! But go listen to the album; it's a whole, it's a classic. There's no yeah, skips. So. Yeah. The actual so, album is good, so I think people need to fall back in love with. That's what I was thinking. Music. Yeah, good music. That's what yeah. well, I, you say. Good music. I wasn't gonna mention, you know, crazy ass Kanye. Like the one thing that stands out with Kanye and shit. Like, okay, yeah, maybe like the Pablo album to me is not the greatest, you know, yeah. but. He's still innovative and searching for new sound. No, he, always, so, oh, he cares about you know? music. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, the Donda sure. album, if you hear that album, it's not like any other album you've ever heard. You yeah, understand? That and that's the thing. Like, I've been thinking about it because, you know, like, I even me, like, as a producer, I get caught up in the same trends and same piano loops and this, that, yeah. and the third. But it's like, hey, bro, search for that new, yeah, that new, that new sound. Because <laughs> that's what niggas is looking for. When you they know? look up tight beat, they're not looking for a fucking. Right. A lot of them are looking for it, but Migos or some shit. They're looking for La Tyler or the niggas that are hot right now because obviously you're looking for the beat of the niggas that are hot. So, so let me ask you this, you know, because you get, you know, since that viral clip, like, and since you know the 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 success of Forty Ounce Fridays, like, you've been you know kind of rubbing shoulders with different people, right? Like other people that are like you would consider that you looked up to. Um, Has there any been anybody that you've met? from the game, you know, whether it be artists or celebrity that kind of like you kind of get taken, you got took in the back or, you know what I'm saying? Like not starstruck, but just kind of like, Oh shit. Like I'm sitting in this room with this person. Cause this of is this that moment. That's you know, like me. because of this, like, you know, I made it. I'm here. Um, if there ain't any shit, you know, spit your shit. Be like, ain't none of these niggas surprise me. Nah. I mean, okay. So like I'll have little moments where I'm like, yo, that's really cool. Um, for sure. I think the last time that I had that, oh, that's really cool, was when um, I had to rap for DJ Quick. Maybe like that's three, a crazy one. That's maybe wild, like three, this nigga said it all. Ah, uh, that was just like rap for DJ Quick. <laughs> that's yeah, wild, maybe like bro. three, four weeks ago. Yeah, we were in Bakersfield. We were in Bakersfield, and I spit, I spit for him, and he was like, by the end of it, he's beatboxing and doing my fucking ad libs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like Quick is such a cool dude. That's man. fire. Like, That's I, fire. I was very humbled. He's super underrated like, too. It was so. man. He that dude is a legend. For so. Stop. For like, stop it. He is on the Mount Rushmore of of what West Coast. Bro, but he's like left out of know, a lot of the conversations. People are fucking stupid. That's because yeah. they're casual. But the people who actually fuck. know, they're yeah. like, oh yeah, he's nah, like that, that. he's that motherfucker, bro. Yeah, like, like, you like, me. Shit, my my, my cousin's gonna hard. love that one, Melvin. That's his favorite right there. Yeah. So that's probably that was probably the last like yo. You know what I mean? Like, oh, um, shit. This is kind of cool right now, you know? But I get it. I have little, little moments like um, the homie, um, I believe his name is Cesar Garcia. He's an actor. He was, like, on Breaking Bad. He's been on the gang. Okay, shit. okay. Sounds familiar. And, um, like, he follows me, and he'll be posting my shit. Like, that's what's yeah, up. That's what's and up. I, I was watching Breaking Bad when I was in prison. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so wild. Like, that's wild too. I'm like, yo, Still, this is crazy. Life, man. What is this life, bro? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I was watching you and you're a fan of me. Yeah, what is life, bro? Like, yeah, you know life. what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. so I've had a lot of that. That's always cool. And then, like, when, when we were doing the original 40 ounces, I. Like the early ones, we were still jacking for beats, right? Like we were, yeah, you know, yeah, rapping on other people's stuff. So like, when I would rap on certain people's stuff, and they would like reach out or comment on it or show love, you know, yeah. I, I got a pretty cool relationship with Rocka from Dilated Peoples because okay. on on Volume Five, I I, I um, rapped to uh, Worst Comes the Worst by mm-hmm. Dilated, mm-hmm. and Worst Comes the Worst, my people, and like first. so, I finally got to meet him in person at Rhyme Fest a few months ago. Uh, and uh, he couldn't have been nicer. Like, super humble dude, real nice. Very, very, very kind and accommodating. I ended up on stage, bro. I was like, hey, if you don't mind, bro, I'll sit back here. 
I'll be out the way. He's like, you're good. Bro, I'm filming. You know, I'm filming all kinds of shit, and I'm taking pictures. I'm just kind of taking it in. Yeah. And I wish, bro, I wish somebody would have been recording. This fool turns around in the middle of the steady season. He's like, yo, Hazard, what up? I'm just like, damn. That's, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Him yeah. and Evan is just catching wreck on stage. <clears throat> and he just turns around, yo, Hazard, what up? I'm just like, what's cracking? <laughs> that was cool. That was that's a cool right. moment. That's right. That's right. That's right. No, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? 12 year old me, 13 year old me was like, oh my God. Yeah, that's crazy. We did it, bro. Yeah, let's <laughs> talk about that real quick. Like, because, you know, you said that you, you fucked with, of course, the West Coast because you are from the West Coast. But, um, you know the East Coast, like who, who, you know who's that? Who's that? Who, who are you going for? Like who's well, on the playlist? On, on the West too, I gotta say that I do gotta say this, like that underground West Coast shit of that era was big for me. But like Dilated, Tumex, fucking okay. Living Legends, yeah, yeah. Like, them dudes were super important to me. Yeah, like, I gotta say that. Um, but from the East Coast, I was like heavy on the Wu Tang shit, like really heavy, like Wu Tang shit. You know, by extension, Red Man. You know what I'm saying? Through the through, through him and Matt, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, that collect you know, that duo bu- right bust, there is crazy. Buster Rhymes, you know what I'm saying? Um, Buster Bus. Yep. Know, Buster Rhymes, Big L, Cassidy. You know, when G Unit hit, that was it for me. Like I was, I was gang banging. <laughs> I think With fifty. That. I think fifty's underrated too, man. As an artist, bro. Man. As a lyricist. That listen to some of the bars. 50? That dude's a oh, songwriter. Oh, he's out of the fucking <laughs> park, Listen to man. some of the bars, man. Like, that crazy. fool's a, such a songwriter, you know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, I was, like, really going up to, to you know, beg for mercy, June and beg for mercy. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, um, I was listening to them. And Lloyd Banks, you know, his, his first couple albums, you know, The Hunger for Oh, Lloyd yeah, that shit was crazy. Bro. You know what I'm saying? What so, would you? I mean, this this is a tough. This is a, this is like a really tough one. It's hard to put people in a box, right? It's so small. But who is your top like three, like like lyricists? Oh man, I don't know, man. That's that's tough. <laughs> it's like super tough to get yeah, that one. Yeah, like lyricists. I don't fuck. I don't know. Let's just say rappers Nas, at all. Who's put your Nas, top Nas, because fuck, man. These last four albums that he's done is. A, as an older gentleman, a more mature gentleman, it's crazy. The fact that he's having like a third prime of his career is stupid. Mm, Nas, mm. Nas, yeah, he Nas got, has to be on it's going there, crazy. Man. All right, just pure lyricist. I'm going to say Nas. I'm going to say Black Thought. And then I'm going to say, I guess Marshall. I guess Eminem. Hey, I have to. Like, I have, like that man. That's crazy. That, put, that man, that man's like. <laughs> it was funny because I, so like, I was like, if he puts M on there, man, so show. much. To, you know what I'm saying? So man, look, so this is my to, thing with M. I to, fuck with him. I think M is one of the craziest rappers ever. He could rhyme orange with door hinge. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. four inch. You yeah. feel me? <laughs> like four inch. The nigga is crazy. Four when inch. it comes to the 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 skill at rapping, he's he's the top. He's probably the best at it. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. But let me say this. The majority of people our age, any age group, they are not driving around bumping an Eminem song. Like the music was not. Timeless. It was a statement for the time. If it mm. comes on, I'll that's still a good, listen to it. That's a good it. way of looking at I'll it. I'll still listen to it. I'll enjoy it. But so, I'm not just bumping it. I'd rather bump Ring Ding Dong before I so, bump. Okay, so here, so hear me out on this. Did you know that Eminem, when they, when they, when they, I forget for what, I forget what it was for, but there was a, um, like a scientific, uh, uh, uh research study done. Oh, shit. Of, uh, and all they did was just pull data from the streams okay, okay. of, gamers and what they've chose to listen to and eminem was like in the top like that's crazy the top three percent like he was if not the most requested artist the second most requested that's crazy artist by gamers crazy, across bro. the world that's crazy. so there I is so that. there is a there's place. a demographic yeah, there's a huge demographic yeah, listen now to are we driving around in the yeah, hood yeah. to it man hell he has <laughs> real questionable lyrics when's the last time you looked this shit up you're like you he know what i want to listen to lyrics, superman right? hey me and sir like, me and sir were listening to that shit the show no hold on no we're not gonna do that tomorrow i'm fucking no i'm not that man is a legend i just listen for the record i listen to him like last week that like man the is whole, a legend I was no for sure that. he's in my, I'll tell you this he's in my workout playlist for no, sure no for sure until I first, collapse the one of the first albums I ever bought was Encore okay it was okay. Get Richard Die Trying and then Til Encore I, Till I, I mean? Collapse Till I Collapse is in mine um, um, I got a few No Apologies The Way I Am um, The Way sure. I Am that's on my that's on my workout playlist um, <laughs> a lot of the Eminem show there was like a yeah, yeah. pretty good the White, that first, White but, America is a hilarious that, 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 that first well, you know no, the second album is almost unskippable to me Marshall Mathers LP yeah 
Yeah, there's yeah. What's the but, one with the puppets and shit in the video? These niggas are walking and shit. Oh, uh, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. a bunch of soldiers and shit. That was on the encore album. They had that one. I know what you're talking about. And then they had the one. Um, it was like a, it was like a uh, Dr. Dre production on that. Yeah, one. That shit was hard. But yeah, I fuck, I fuck with them. I was just making the point that we. Yeah. Don't, no, but look, I think, I think it's just time and a place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let me highlight some. I mean, we highlighted it before in this podcast. I don't know if you knew this though, but the another reason why Eminem is the greatest lyricist and artist is because he produced a lot of the love to the game album. He did, yeah, he did. He was on the like he was on the, the on that project, he and to did. me, that loyal to the Feeny, game album. A Feeny specifically asked him to do it. Yeah, and and, and a lot of those tra- tracks know, were fucking. Rest in peace to that queen. But um, it, I I love that album. Some people told me I only like it because I'm such an Eminem fan. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that shit. That's but a he, classic, bro. Album. He, he, the song Loyal to the Game like that Loyal song, to the Game Yeah That actually Loyal th- to the Game And then uh, Thugs Get Lonely too. Mm-hmm. That's a crazy I love that yeah, beat sure. Thugs Get Lonely too. Is a if hard, I'm not mistaken sure. There might banger. be some DJ Quick production On that believe, album as I well I believe there is I believe there is uh, But uh, there was like That song was like A two version song And I think DJ Quick Took that next one And pfft, I forget what song it is man But That's what I'm saying That's why for me Eminem is like Bro Think about everything That Eminem has went against Right Yeah like and then to get no, to produce sure. one of the biggest legends, no, for yeah. sure. you know, and like, the, and for the mom to be like, yeah, I wanted to, I be wanted him. to be him, no, for yeah, sure. that's that's, he, that's it speaks it speaks for the type, of, and then and then Eminem is the reason we have like the fit, like, not reason, but he played a big role yeah, in fifty sure. shit, you know, oh, what yeah, saying? he did, yeah, because they, so, they they said that they were scared to sign yeah. him. And he and he took a risk on fifty, just like you know Dre did to him. And he got there from that hard work, that straight, just you feel me. It, Increasing his skill every fucking day, because like I said, he is one of the, he is the best probably yeah. when it comes to rhyming and like. Well, yeah, the, you said like, you said lyricist, so I said who was the first one I said? You said you Nas. Said, you said Nas. Yeah, I said Nas, Black Thought, Black and Thought, M, 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 right? Just raw lyricism. No, for yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. That's it. I'm not talking. What about, about Jay, man? Because everybody, you know, what's, what do you what, what do you think Jay, about Jay? Jay? A lot of people Sean put Carter? him number one and shit. Sean Carter. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think. Look, I'm not gonna sit here and say that you're fucking crazy. I think he's overrated a little I, bit. Really? I wouldn't put him at one. I wouldn't put him. I would at just one. say this: he's he's the one thing he's gotten really good at as he's gotten older is really owning his like celebrity. Yeah, like and he like it's like he comes out of the sky and just drops an eight minute verse and tells everybody to fuck off. And <laughs> yeah, 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 for He'll sure. He'll be back next sure. year. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. Sure. All right, see you guys next year. I'm gonna, you know. So I mean, he definitely I has the that whole, pool. Uh, to stop entire the entire rap game is gonna stop. And he For doesn't sure. put the. Yeah. Um, he's not just flexing like I'm rich. He's flexing on the niggas who are saying they're rich. Yeah. He's yeah, not exactly. just flexing on everybody. He's just he's like, like, I am richer than all the rich guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have all the money. All the rich no, guys no. are just like, we you can't take nothing broke. away from Jay-Z and, 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 and no, the type sure. of, you know, wealth that he's built from no, being sure. a rapper. You for know sure, what I mean? Sure. Legendary. But. But, like, when I think about, like, his lyrics, I mean, of course, you got the classics, you know, Big Pimpin' and, like, you know, all the classics, you got those. But Did I think Did you just that- say Big Pimpin' and lyricism <laughs> in the same fucking sense? I mean, that, look, he was dope on the record, <laughs> but that's not exactly a fucking display of, like... Elite lyrics. Hey, like, I love, I love it was that a bounce sounder. record. It was a part. He said the classics, like big, no wonder you don't <laughs> fucking like Jay Z. He's, he's like, well, you know how he did Big Pimpin' fool, like. You know, that was the one for me. That's where he peaked, <laughs> That's you know? I mean, H I to the like Izzo, little... bro, H to the Izzo, Hard Knock Life. I mean, those are all great. No, no, for sure. The ones those that are... hit, hit, you feel no, me? For sure. But, like, uh, there's there's a lot of skippables. 99, 99 Problems? There is a lot I of... I don't know about that. There's a lot of skippables. Is that you? Who's that? Yeah, that's the laptop. Niggas there... crazy. Who the fuck is <laughs> that? There's a lot of skippables. Was. There's a lot of skippables is what I'm saying, you know? Yeah, I mean, and may, maybe... And... Hold on. Wait, this nigga shit on me as soon as I said Big Pimpin'. He's like, nigga, you don't know what the fuck. I'm like, well, yeah, if that's the one that <laughs> no, you want to no, go with, you son feel of me? A you bitch. feel me? Like, there's, I mean, here's, if you listen on the Black album, there's so many displays. I'm just like, oh my goodness. Yeah. And even before then, though, you know, he, I don't know, man. I just feel like he he was always like playing the game smarter than a lot of fools. You know, and, and, and just as an older age, you really see it. Now he's just basking in his fucking ambiance. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I ain't mad at it. Like, talking yeah, shit, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, but, um, I mean, yeah, if somebody says that that's their favorite lyricist, I'm not going to say they're fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like a valid. Now, if you say something like, I don't know. Macklemore. If you say, 
I mean, God bless him, but yeah, no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, There's some white kid out there. Who's, your other, nice boy? Guy. who's your other boy? The nigga that just said nigga. Oh, Logic. Oh, Logic. Logic. What do you think yeah. about? Man, what do you think about Logic, bro? Man, this nigga told me Logic's good. Hey, was it you that told me Logic's good? Listen to everybody. I listened to all the ones you told me to listen to. This shit was 44 bars or whatever the fuck. That shit, that okay, shit was on then. some. What do you think, bro? That shit was on what some you? college party fucking shit, nigga. Flexicution. I'm going to just keep it a buck with you. I, and I hate that. I, look, because I'm trying to promote positivity. I really am. Hey, shit on him if no, you have No, no, you don't have to this disrespect is the, him. No, this is the no, place. be honest no, no, about what you no. think okay, about his this music. This is the I place try, no, 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 to shit on him. Light, no, 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 but here's... Impressed rap, or rap not impressed? Not impressed. Rap in general. <laughs> rap in general, Yeah, the right? skill, the quality of what really it is. I really dislike, I really dislike rappers that like, that I look at and it's just like, it's kind of a corniness to him. Um, okay. I, like, I mean, I, he definitely has it, yeah. I, like, I just, I like that street shit, bro. And I, yeah, I like sure. I said, I'm trying to promote positivity here. But, but you have to lie. also feel it. I ain't gonna it. lie. When I hear these young bucks talking that shit, I'd be like, oh, damn, that's how y'all getting down, huh? And it's like, it's a certain energy to it, right? And so, oh, like, and some of it, I some of it's too much. Like, the whole, like, you know, laughing at somebody's graveside yeah, sure. yeah, or sure. something. Like, I think that that's, there's just... And sometimes line. the music, honestly... It sounds the same where it's like, yeah, you, there's nothing new now. You're just yeah, talking about some different of the, ways. Some of the harder rah rah shit, I fuck with. Yeah, right? for but sure, for sure. My, that my vibe, thing is, yeah, but my thing is, okay, you don't have to make like the most gangsterous records, right? Yeah, yeah. But what I don't like, I'm not going to lie, is when you have people who try to like, like maybe they don't talk about that stuff, but they also actively try to like thumb their nose. At the people that do. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, shame on you. Do better. Look at me. I'm rapping about carrot juice. You know what mm. I'm saying? I'm rapping about how my fucking diet is vegan. And I want to <laughs> rap about my fucking mental health regimen yeah. and shit. You're talking about Larry and y'all talking about, <laughs> and y'all talking about fucking, and y'all talking about gangster shit yeah. still. Shame on y'all. Get on my level. And it's like, what? Bitch, shut the fuck up. Like, I just think, like, I really feel like, um, like, I just feel like motherfuckers, like, if you're, if you're an enlightened individual... Yeah. Cool. And no, for the record, I wasn't talking about Larry June because Larry June is not necessarily saying like, you know, fuck y'all if you don't drink your orange juice yeah, the way yeah. I do. No, no, no. He's just like, look, this is what I'm on. And that's his like level of fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I fuck with, I that. Fuck with that shit. But yeah, yeah. he's not like talking down to the motherfuckers in the trenches. Like doing other shit. He's just he's, he's trying to motivate he's you just to trying do to, that. Yeah, Worry exactly. about your health. Ride your Ex- bike, man. Exactly. I, was, I, mean, I would say with logic is like as a, I feel like some of these fools be that kind of preachy. But it's like you never had to live through that. So yeah, what do you sure. really, you know, like hit, wait, so? Some are unbelievable for you. Well, yeah, if I if it's just coming across as like it's not unbelievable. genuine, yeah. it's just not genuine. Yeah, it's just not genuine. It's like, bro, this shit's contrived yeah. because you're just because you're not comfortable in that space because they called you corny and laughed at you and threw rocks at you. Don't fucking spend your time trying to throw like slight. Little I, jabs I think at I it. think what fucks up. I mean, you know what, like, what fucks up no, logic sure. a little bit though is the the fact that he always like wants to like. Really make it like noticeable that he is black. That he's half black. The thing that gets me, and that's the, where people like it. Kind of fucks up his like, you know. That what I'm boy saying? whiter than me. Look, the thing I'm that, gets, look, that boy is lighter than me. Dog. That nigga look like Harry Potter. And if he got pulled over in the middle of the night, a cop be good. Would, a cop wouldn't go. Oh, who's this black yeah, guy no, right for sure. here? Yeah. Like, shut the fuck. The up. Thing, the thing, the thing with logic bro. though is because honestly, with keep it straight to the music, I don't fuck with the music. It's on some frat boy college shit. Like that's the. That's the demographic he was trying to basically entertain and make money off of. Cool. But the thing that fucks me up off the music is that to go from that to straight playing that white boy frat boy shit to now like, oh, believe me, I'm a nigga. You yeah. feel me? It's like he makes you it spent very all that time trying to prove that you were that white boy it, college frat just, boy. It just fucks up his you, whole you feel me? You're trying to, persona. Like, bro, sense. just be you, bro. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, that video was funny as fuck though when he said nigga in front of his dad, and even his dad looked like him, looked at him all like, yeah, like that nigga said, be yourself. No cap. He said everybody should just be there. <laughs> straight up, dude. <laughs> right he straight up, he like he shit on him. <laughs> no, for sure. But let me ask you this: Has uh, like okay. You 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 you've been working with artists or whatever you know, but um, let's go to that next level of artists. Like, who is that next artist? Like that next level artist? Or like, I gotta like, I want to work with this person. Man, who's that next level artist? It's like I need to work with heads. Exactly. <laughs> not, not, no, 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 real no, shit. That's, real that's, shit. Like, hey. that's that real. That's that real fucking not answering the question. To the, a dick can't wait. Nah. That's that Lil Wayne, right? This nigga busts out of the freestyle right, right after. 
My competition ain't nothing. It's repetition. It's <laughs> <laughs> no, what I would say, what I would say is, like, who, uh, who's a dream artist, man? Who you want to work with, man? Oh, man, I'm trying to think. I think it's more producers. Like I got a hit list, man. I was gonna ask I you would, both of them. So I would love to work with like a Primo. I would love to work with Hit Boy. I would love to work with. Uh, Imagine with, the with Hit Dre. Boy or Primo album with this nigga. I'd love to work Going with Dre. Crazy. Like I would love to work with Quick. You know what I mean? That that, yeah. that interaction I had with him was super dope. You, you know, know on those West Coast beats quick. is crazy. Honestly, yeah, I, I think you work any of them. Quick, um, sure. you know, um, that would be awesome. You know, um, you know, um, um, uh, Battle Cat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Battle um, Cat for sure. Battle Cat, even like uh, won't, 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 like Daz. Won't, won't. I think Daz gets slept on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah he does. He does. Daz gets slept on. Obviously. I mean, he did America uh, Ambitions of a Writer or some shit exactly, like that. He did. Yeah, and then and then obviously you know obviously like yes like a Pharrell you know the, or the Neptunes oh, you know, yeah, 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 or whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, obviously, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Somebody like that. Somebody like a Timberland. Let but, me give you the top. Let me give you real quick the top three uh, producers: Timbo, Dre. Kanye, this nigga loves Timbo. That's so, his boy. So, so, so Timbo's dope. I think I'm gonna say Dre. I'm gonna say Dre. But damn, the album never ne- might never like we never might see that shit with I, Dre. I'm, I'm gonna say Dre. I'm gonna say Primo. Yeah. Mm. Primo goes. I can imagine this nigga on some Primo beats. You might and just quick. have to get his attention and quick oh. and quick because we gotta really start putting some respect on that man's name. Quick, yeah. No, sure. He's so Dre, slept Dre, on, bro. Dre, quick and Primo. That's my three. No, okay. Sure. Okay. That's my three. Yeah. So we went through the top. You, you did you give us a top three for the for the for the artists? Um, I'm no, more but those like are I said, I'm said more Marshall. More. He, he said, said lyricists. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, lyricists. Said, I said yeah. I said I said uh uh, uh who the fuck who was my first one? Nas. 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 Yeah. There Nas. we go. Nas Black Thought. Yeah. Nas. Black what do you think about Nas man. linking up with like Damien? How was that shit? I Damien like that Marley. Shit. I like that. Patience is one of like you remember that song Patience. I, I it introduced me to Damian Marley like in a real way. Yeah. And, like I like I like ah man that fool be talking that shit. Speak I like life. Street you ever heard speak music, life? bro. Like I like street music. Okay. okay. You know what I'm saying like I like that. Like he talks that he's yeah. talking his struggle from his island, from his yeah yeah, yeah. from his blocks, from him from his perspective. Yeah. And you can hear it. You're like, yeah, this is really a man of the people. Like, and he's for the yeah, people. Yeah, Speak Life. You ever heard that shit? Speak you know what I'm saying? Nah. Who's it? What's, what is it? Uh, Damian Marley. Is it Damian Marley? It's called Speak Life. It's, it's like, honestly, bro, it's like he said, like, it's like talking to the people. It's like, it's almost like uplifting. It's like struggle. You feel me? Let me ask you this. Fire. When it comes to Drake, where does Drake stand for you? Yeah, I really want to know that. Artists. I want to know that. You feel me? Like, what is, what is Drake? Because, like. Drake is another one. It's like love, like a lot of people love him, yeah. but a lot of people hate and, him. And because you said you like the street music, but also I know you're like more deep into the history of music. But we all, if you, if we're honest, you got to be honest. Drake is one. Of the, he's top top three artists. When it comes to like, ever. when it comes to the entertainment business, or just you just think like, I mean, in technically general. he's a rapper who harmonizes. He has some R and B albums, but. He's yeah. he's a rapper who harmonizes. I mean, I'm a I, I like Drake a lot. But I think he's a really there's nothing this man can't do, man. We no, talked sure. about it last. We've been talking about it. So um, like, where's yeah. where's he mean, at with I your top that, artists? I think that he understands how to be uh, an entertainer probably better than almost anybody, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. He's had this long of like a a, a relevance that, that you know. He, this long of having a relevance switching right? styles yeah being yeah. being relevant mm-hmm. this long and um there's no way that that's easy i don't care what anybody says so like you could to not, be that consistent yeah and shit. Th- th- just because like i can't I have miss like, and shit bro. i have like a it's little like steph curry i've never heard a bad song i well i have a little bit of, of experience with it now right having been yeah. just consistent with 40 ounce and that's not like half of what this fool's doing in terms of like brand partnerships and traveling all over the world and, yeah you know, jumping on all these features and doing all this shit, right? But I know a little bit about what it takes to be consistent. Yeah. So when you're consistent that long at that high of a level, like, I'm sorry, you're not getting lucky. You might be able to get lucky once, twice, even three times. Oh, yeah. You can get lucky. Like, you can literally do everything wrong, and the, the, the song just be so hot that it just goes just for lucky. you. Yeah. And you just get lucky, right? And you might be able to pull it off a second and even a third time, but eventually you're going to get in your own way. Yeah, for sure. And you're going you're gonna to fuck it off. And Fall this off shit's somewhere. Gonna, consistent. And you're gonna, he, this, this dude shit is, is fucking consistent. We're talking different. Sounds different. Eras. You know what yeah. I'm saying? 
um, dance running hall, his own show. Spanish. Yeah, yeah. So, so you gotta, yeah, so you gotta give it to that man. Period. I don't know yeah. where I would put him. I don't know because I feel like that. I feel like he's still trying to drop new shit. Yeah, for sure. He's, so I feel like his story, like, I, and I think he said that in interviews. Like his story's not even done. Yeah, he's yeah, like, wait yeah. until I'm like just being lathered up on a fucking island somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah chilling. Yeah. And he's I, like, I, the best has yet to even come. You good know? for him. You know? yeah, so, yeah. so I would say that, yeah, let him keep writing the story. Yeah. I'm, I'll say this. I'm not a fucking Drake hater. Yeah, like, nah, sure. that shit's weird yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. if you can't objectively be like, yeah, the dude's got good music, you're yeah. fucking weird. Yeah, there's a lot of that's people crazy. who don't fuck that's, with it, you feel me? That's weird, though. That's like, a, I feel like you're, I think you're, anybody, I feel like you're trying person. to be mad yeah. about something. I was just wondering what like, you thought about the quality of music. Because you're very particular. I think it's good. You're very particular. I don't listen to all of it, right? I don't listen to all of it. Like, just because, like, I don't listen to hardly anything. Yeah. You know, I'm just, like, focused on, like, making my shit. Yeah. But, like, there's a ton of records, yeah. Like, there's not a whole lot of skips. I know that. Yeah. Quality-wise, right? No, are you sure? Like, like, Quality-wise, it's yeah. crazy. Are you the type that, like, like you just, like, bumping your shit? Like, the new shit Driving you just recorded? I do that, I like, I'm until I'm numb on the ear with it, and then I can just put it away and never listen to it again. Gotcha. Like, I, I don't know when the last time shit. I heard Starter Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I listened listen, like, listen to it the, the other day. Through, all the way through, I don't know when was the last time I heard that song. But when you do listen to it, you listen to it like a thousand times. I haven't heard. No, I haven't heard. No, I'm saying now. when you were the patch. When of time I first you had it, yeah. When I first had it, I listened to it over and over, and I took notes, and I don't like this, and I do like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I need to fix it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what would you say? Like, 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 what, what is it that, like, what is it that, like, gives you that drive to be consistent? Because we, you know, life is life in. So right. What, so what, how I do you think like the knock out the noise? For me, the biggest one for me is um. I'm gonna be real. Watching, watching a, a Nipsey Hussle pass away, watching Kobe pass away, and seeing the legacy he left behind. I remember like thinking like, when Nipsey passed, I remember having a real conversation with myself like, man, what if what if something happened to you tomorrow? What would people remember you for? And I didn't really like the answer. It mm, bothered okay. me. Low key. It, I was like, fuck, like what a waste of some. Fucking potential. I had the same yeah. thoughts. I'm not even gonna lie. I and, so, crazy. and so I started pushing. My, I got scared. Like I started working frantically. I think we started forty ounce like a week or two after Nipsey passed. Okay. okay. A week after. Okay. A week after Nipsey passed. So so, like I was literally I was no like that two weeks after, I was literally like I had a, like a fire under my ass. Like I was like I gotta I gotta push. I gotta I gotta I gotta leave something behind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, That's what's up. so yeah, what was the first part? Of, I'm really faded. What was the first part of the question? <laughs> Just consistency, how you stay consistent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah how, so you, that, that was like, how, how do you yeah. stay consistent shit? Because, you know, life be life. And, and, and that was it right there. And yeah. that was it for me. It's like I'm leaving something like, God forbid I'm fucking, you know what I'm saying, fell off of a cliff tomorrow. Yeah. You know, my thing is like people could go back through my page and they would like sit there and listen to all these raps and be like, Wow, he really loved this shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, if nothing else, like this motherfucker rap. That's fire. I you know what I'm that. saying? I like, you know, that. and so that's it, bro. I just, I just want people to know that, like, I genuinely love this shit, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I hope that I can leave it in a better place than when I found it. That's fire. Sure. I hope there's a kid right now that I am inspiring. Yeah, yeah. You, know, sure. you were saying, like, you know, a stranger, right? I hope there's a 12 year old kid, like, this dude's the greatest thing ever, and he's obsessing over everything I do. And then 10 years from now, he wants to be better than me. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's hard. Yeah, I would love that. Hard. You understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, the I idea that. of that excites me. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just pushing forward. Yeah, yeah, like, that. Forward motion yeah. always, yeah. And another question that comes back to the hip-hop, you feel me? Um, so, like, you got a lot of people going crazy on the East Coast. A lot of people coming out of Atlanta, you feel me? Mm-hmm. A lot of people blowing up and shit. So my question is, like, I feel like the West Coast... We don't got a lot of people coming with the quote unquote West Coast sound. Sure. The people from the West Coast that are blowing up are the people that you don't even really are know from the West Coast, like Roddy Rich, yeah. Tyler the Creator. Like yeah. these are the people that are blown up. Besides like maybe like Blueface. And that's what I mean. Like when I mean blown up, I mean like you could listen to them anywhere in the US, right. you'll catch them. You feel me? Why do you think that like that West Coast sound, quote unquote, isn't like doing what it should be doing all around the country? Well, I think I think more than anything, I think is what. Okay, are you saying when you say West Coast sound, are we like okay, is it G funk or like is it like, like is it, it like the, is it Drake? the rolling or is it the rolling eight oh eights with a skip beat like mustard, right? Why? So 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 this is what I would say to that. Both of those worked, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Tyler's working, right? Um, Roddy's working, right? Yeah. It's just good music. 
No, for so sure. The, 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 now, there's going to be certain themes that even like Roddy being, you know, he's from wherever he's from, he's still going to have certain themes in his music. Mm-hmm. And that's going to give you that West Coast. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah either yeah. Are you from the, yeah, yeah. Are you so, like, for him to say that, like, yeah. okay. Yeah. He is gang banging. Yeah. Allegedly, whatever. Right. So I think that that's going to leak through anyways. It's like, it doesn't necessarily have to sound. You know, like a a Zap and Roger sample. You know what yeah, 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 and I think the, the quote unquote West Coast sound. The last person to be like that is probably like a YG. Yeah, I, like I would say so. Face. But but if you listen to YG and then you listen to like the game or Snoop, sonically completely oh, for sure. different. For so sure. he had but, taken the, he had taken the sound in another place. But YG, you're still getting those samples sometimes. You're still getting sure. the Dre samples and, then, and shit in the background. And then you but then you look at like a Kendrick. Yeah, for sure. Right. And, and that's like, not really West Coast f- at all. What the f- Exactly. And, that's, and he's the that's biggest what's hot. in the game. Exactly. exactly. So, yeah, so yeah, I yeah. would say that I think. That's I, very true. I think it's just about making the best music possible. I think too many people get caught up in that. In that sound. Trying and to stay in that. Trying to stay in that. Or trying to be like, oh, well, they're not feeling us because we're from the West. No, just make good music. No, for sure. Just shut the fuck up. Just focus because on the music. Because focus Roddy, on the music. Roddy, he's out of here. No, for right? sure. Out of here. Tyler, out of here. Right? And they subscribe to none of that shit. Yeah. They just made the best music possible. They fed their fan base and they said, fuck the haters. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And what if Roddy was like concerned? Like, oh, man, they said I sound like an, an Atlanta fool. I should switch it up. Let me mm-hmm. jump on a G-Funk beat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What if Tyler was like, damn, you know what? I'm going to start wearing khakis. I'm going to crease them. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know saying? damn, like, yeah. you know what? I'm, I'm fucking up. That'd be detrimental no, so, for you know, sure. You know what I'm saying? So you just got to, I think you just got to be 100% you. And I think you just got to embrace what you, because it also shows that the West Coast, Southern California is an eclectic and diverse place. No, for sure. We're not all running around trying to kill each other. Mm-hmm. That is not the case at all. No, for sure. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. think that, I think that, you know, street culture and gang culture kind of permeate a lot of things out here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think, you know, even a, a somebody who is not, you know, well-versed in that area will still have certain knowledge of stuff. Yeah. You know, but, but. You know, and they might go elsewhere and seem like a gang expert, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But ultimately, you got plenty expert. of people like... Diff- not everybody's running around gang banging and stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You have a lot of people that are not. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, and it's insulting to them to just get painted with that. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's oh, like, do you gang bang? Like, no, I go to box. fucking Cal Poly. Like, <laughs> yeah. what you put you in a box. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Do you gang bang? Go to fucking CSUN. Fuck yeah. you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the people are like, wait, what? You know, so so I would say that... I would say that... There, to me, there, there should be no such thing. Even though obviously, like G Funk or like that Rolling 808 with a skip beat yeah. shit in it, I understand that there are stereotypes that are attributed to that. Yeah. But my thing is just like make good music. Just yeah. focus on the music. Focus on the music and, and just and just tell your story. And I think right now too, where the space is at, like that Atlanta music is almost like that more futuristic, like super mumble rap. Like that's just where the culture is right now at this. I moment. feel like right now. Uh, Florida is the one killing it. Yeah, coming, Florida. Yeah, now up. Florida is coming up. Now it's like moving from Atlanta to Florida. Yeah. But what was what I was gonna say was that basically like on the on the West Coast, I feel like our new our new West Coast rap is uh is that Draco like that Draco Draco blue style. face. Oh, he's, like, he's been. I mean, he's been influenced. You know, and, and all everybody's and, a baby yeah, Draco right now. Everybody. No I lie. mean, it's it's Draco. It's it's that it's that he entire that. family tree. Yeah, you know, for that, sure. You got. You got the kid old Jeezy. You got, for sure. Yeah, you got uh, what Ralphie, I'm saying? Ralphie the plug. For Ralphie sure. the plug, and and them dudes do very well. Oh yeah, yeah. like it's good their, music. I fuck their, with that shit on their own. Like they really be like really on their own, just on that independence on, shit on the super from what indie it seems. grind. And respect to them, man. Yeah, like, for sure. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know them gentlemen at all. I have no like no plugs with them. Nothing. I just, I would say, just like. Just from what I see. Watch it oh, just yeah. from afar. Sure. You see, just like, from what I see, like, I, I enjoy the music and, shit. and respect to them. And the blueprint is crazy. Yeah, the blueprint respect, is crazy. It drops, it drops shit like you flipping a sack, nigga. Every song gets gets some views, nigga. Them fools drop are, another. Man, I, I, them fools are like This nigga's dropping like for, two songs a week. Bro, they're for hustlers for real, dog. I feel like, you know, there's probably been a lot of independent independent acts, right? Like, you got the Master P's and the Birdman's and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Um, But I feel like the... The one that really highlighted for a lot of us was Nipsey, bro. Yeah. Like, he really showed you that, like, look, you could get it on your own. Yeah. You just got to be consistent and put in that work. And 
hire the right people, whatever, you know what I'm saying, to get your vision out there. And, and it was also, and too. And these guys are kind of following down, you know? It was kind of like because the other other people, like, the before were more mysterious. When it came to Nip, you heard them stories of this nigga selling his CDs yeah. on the fucking street. Nigga walking yeah, up to yeah, cars, yeah, yeah. trying to sell the CD, walking up to the game and the game talking about, oh, I didn't know who was walking in that car. All I knew was a crip, nigga, and... This nigga pulling up talking about, I got a $70 CD, nigga. Yeah. yeah. Buy this shit yeah, while so, he's selling incense. You feel me? To yeah. what he was. Like, that shit's crazy. crazy. Yeah. That it kind of just crazy. like what I'm saying. It highlighted it for us. You know what I'm saying? So I think anybody that's listening, you know, you can really do it yeah, on your own. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, 1, there's a lot of avenues. Yeah, you know? 1,000%. You know, so. You got to really, want, like I said, the music has to be good. Like, don't don't yeah, lie yeah. to yourself. No, for but, sure. But. But yeah, bro. Work yeah, at it. Work yeah, at that's it. it right there. Just you know? keep pushing at it for sure. Let me ask you this. Um, like with the success, you know, like like what what was like not what has been the big challenge? Because I feel like you kind of like here, there, everywhere. Like I mean, you just came from a fucking show to right here, you know, yeah. um, in San Diego, you know. So like, what has been the challenge? Like adjusting to like kind of like this celebrity, you know what I mean? Like what has been the adjustment? Like how's it been? Man, I'll tell you this, it don't pay as much as the fuck they tell you. I've learned I've learned real quick. I'm like, man, these fools a lot of these fools are fucking broken to me. Like <laughs> look, <laughs> yeah, man, real, like it don't shit, it don't pay shit. like you it don't pay like you think it does one. I'll say that. I still gotta go out and get it. Like I gotta yeah. hustle hard, you know? And um, yeah. so so I, I do, but um I think that probably the, the biggest thing that I've learned is to just kinda keep things in perspective. Like, don't let your head like kinda run away with itself and don't like like, bro, you, you, you know, could be the hottest shit today and you could be cold as ice tomorrow. And then five years from now, they could dust off some shit that you liked and all of a sudden you're mm-hmm. hot again. You just got to learn yeah. to kind of, kind of keep a level head and like, no matter what's going on, don't, um, don't, you know, don't allow yourself to get like too high or too low. I think you should always walk with your head held high. I think you should always have a supreme self-belief. You know what I'm saying? But I also think that like, it's really easy to kind of let your ego get away from you and kind of shit on people mm, when sure. you're really, really up. Kind of so like, like just kind of keep yourself a little yeah, humble. I would, I would say so. I would say just, just to kind of keep yourself like keep yourself grounded. Just understand grounded. that like yeah, yeah, that's a good you word. know what I'm saying. You might be the hottest shit today, and you might not be tomorrow. Yeah. And that's show business. I think that if you really want to have a long career in show business, you gotta understand it's gonna ebb and flow. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that that would be the thing that I think that I've kind of really taken to heart and and also i don't take none of this shit personal it's all business to me mm-hmm. like respectfully ain't none of these motherfuckers my friend yeah like the way i look at it right like i've made some good relationships that like i, I have like where, where there's like nothing in it for me to gain or nothing in it for them to gain and we're like doing favors for each other yeah. just on some friendship shit right yeah but aside from that I, the way i look at it with everybody is like look man like we're in this, business we're in this entertainment business. We're colleagues. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to get super offended if you as my colleague don't do exactly what I was hoping for you to do. Mm-hmm. If you as my colleague, you know, I hit you up and you're like, sure, I can get that done. And then you don't. It'd be the same thing as if my coworker did it. Yeah, right? yeah. Damn, that fool dropped the ball. Well, you know what? You asked him to do it. You took a risk and you depended on him. You know now not to ask them the next time the job comes 100%. around, right? Yeah. Instead of getting people being, oh, people are fake and fuck everybody, and I hate the industry. Mm. No, just mm. understand it's a, it's a it's a job like anywhere else. No one's gonna. It's bat literally a, thousand. a game. No, for sure. No one's gonna bat a thousand. You know what I'm saying? Not even you. So it's like that's the thing I think that I've learned the most with this shit. Like, don't take none of this shit personally, bro. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. not that's to me. It's not. But maybe because like I was in a place where motherfuckers were never coming home. Mm. You know what I'm no, saying? And sure. we'll cut your face open because they had a bad morning. So it's like, to me at least, it's like, you know, this shit is low stakes politics. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. like, what y'all gonna do to me? Yeah, well, sure. Oh, I'm gonna have to go work a fucking day job again? Like, okay. Yeah. 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 Like, you understand what I'm saying? Like, I've been on the grind yeah, like, regardless. Fuck, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Like, <laughs> so I just look at it like, I just look at it, you know, I just kind of approach everybody. I treat everybody with respect. Uh, you know, I give everybody the respect, you know, as, as a man, and as a woman, you know, and, and uh, you know, treat people how I want to be treated. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I uh, try not to get too 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 big high headed on myself and shit. Or too low on myself. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's the main thing. Kind of you know, forward motion only. For sure. Yeah. What would you say? Uh, 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 um, <clears throat> what's next for you, man? Like like what do you got? What do you got coming out? What's what's next for you? Yeah, man. So um, we got a lot of sex toys coming out. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
What they you got? Are, what kind of type of shit you got? They, yeah, shit. they are completely hypoallergenic. <laughs> this nigga got mo- phallic, molded and shit. Uh. Phallic, yeah, phallic moldings of my genitalia. <laughs> oh, hell no. Nah. I'm going to be yeah. giving this nigga's dick to my it's bitch. Called, it's uh, called yeah. Just the Tip. Oh, shit. <laughs> Get called, the hash. It's just called the Just the Tip. tip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big hash. It's called crazy. Just the Tip with a telescopic, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> telescopic effect. That's crazy. You know? shit. But no, no, no. In all seriousness, <clears throat> um, in all seriousness, uh, we got the um, Hazard Terp Cooler. Um, it's currently out right now. Uh, go follow a central cooler. cooler. Yeah, go follow a central coolers on IG. Oh yeah. And um, uh, it's a cooler. Like if you want to store your um, your uh, like uh your cannabis dance. extracts. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. You can do so in a um. Temperature controlled, humidity monitored environment. Um, okay. it's pretty cool. It's completely wrapped with all the uh. 40 ounce Friday's uh, uh, logo and graphics. Oh, yeah. Um, it's pretty dope. So it's like, it looks like beer bubbles coming up the side of the cooler and shit. Oh, yeah. Uh, so shout out to Central Coolers. Um, That's they're, the, they're the company I partner with for that. Um, I got a project I'm finishing up called Hold the Sticks with my boy VHS. Um, it's the real, that real minimal, you know, sample based loop. Hey, we production. gotta get that one, man. It can't, it can't yeah. get held on like the other one. And it's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be Hold the Sticks and, uh, and the Hazard Sticks release. That's probably what I'm focused on the most. And then, I don't think I've announced it, so I'm officially announce it here. Since y'all wanted me, well, your first good. guest yes, on sir. episode 40, Mr. 40 Ounce Fridays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so look, um, where's my camera at? Right here? Right here. All right, look, um, I go by Hazard to the fucking mic, um, and I just appreciate everybody who supported 40 Ounce Fridays for the last 220 weeks. Um, it's kind of crazy the way the math works out. Uh, sitting in volume 220. We now have uh, uh, 40 weeks to volume 260. Volume 260 would be five years of 40 ounce Fridays as a series. Jeez. So we're going to go ahead and put it to bed at volume 260. So we're now, as of this week, coming, counting down. We got 40, 40 ounce Fridays left. Jeez. So we're oh, going to do a gang of cool shit. Yeah. Oh, so we're going to do a gang of cool shit in the meantime. Um, we're going to do some giveaways. We're going to do some really cool fan experiences. And we're going to cap this whole thing off with a really dope live event. 40 Ounce Fridays live. We're going to end it after 260 weeks of continuous fucking heat oh, and shit. bars in your That's fucking crazy. face. So, yeah. um, So, yeah, starting starting this week, we're counting down. We got 40 40 Ounce Fridays left. Holy shit. I'm be looking you know out for that shit for sure. Yeah, That's man. crazy. Yeah. yeah, man. That's crazy. So, so, so what, what, what's putting an end to it, though? Like, you, um, you just like, I just, okay, I this want, is it. I want to... um. I want to elevate 40 ounce Fridays beyond um, beyond quote unquote just some freestyles, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, we got some real cool stuff planned ahead, and um, you know, I uh, I filed for the trademark on 40 ounce Fridays. Oh, it's been a while now. I'm waiting on it. That's right. But um, but like that's me right there. So you're gonna just turn it into some whole other. Next I got, we level got some shit. real big, yeah. We got some real big plans for it, so it's gonna be dope. I'm really excited. So it's not, it's not to necessarily it. deading it. It's more like elevating. let's elevate this mm-hmm. shit We're to elevating. the next level. We're okay, elevating. and you're right. here first. T-minus That's right. Not impressed, man. Not impressed. Podcast, man. You know what I'm saying? Forty more episodes. I'm gonna be watching that shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So we got. It's like. 40 more volumes, baby. That's right, that's right. Hey, so everybody out there, you feel me? Go tap in with this nigga. Go to I'm a Hazard. Yeah. On Instagram. You got yeah. 40 more weeks, man. Check out all his Check old shit, Check him out. Too, Repost that shit. shit is crazy, man. And, and I mean, I see. I feel like he can go on like a Funk Flex, a uh, Shade Room. No, for any, sure. Shade 45. Uh, Shade 45. For sure. Yeah. And, bro, and Shade Room, too. And Shade Room, too. Bro, when I said I put this nigga in the top five freestylers, hey, bro, I, I, appreciate I don't see it, why not, you. honestly. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate like, the shit is you, I mean, because I'm like even Thank stacking you. it against like a J. Cole. Like, I'm like... No, for I sure. can see him going like toe to toe. No, you for feel sure. me? It's like, that shit motivates me to write. I'm not yeah, gonna lie. Man, that shit's motivated you, me plenty of times to be like, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, like this nigga's consistent. Like he's going there. Like, I gotta do this. Oh man. yeah, that like he did it just off of just consistency and fucking having skill and keep going. Like, yeah, and how yeah. we were talking earlier too. Like, you gotta put out good music, and it's right. not, and, and it is consistency and good music. If you keep putting out shit and you keep doing shit, you're only bound to get and good. You, and you have to approach it. Like, Sooner or later, you're going to get it, good. Yeah. Like, right. that's part of it, too. Like, you're going to get good. Nobody was good at first. Yeah. Right. I don't care who you nah, are. Nah, Hazard said he came out the gate like, he popped out, out the, like. I came out the gate fully formed. I mean, he might have <laughs> at the time, but who he is now from then, yeah, yeah, yeah. those are two oh, different yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know elevation. what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. And, and you couldn't, 
you probably wouldn't be able to do the same 240 40 ounce freestyles when you first did it at 16. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Well, you could have. It kind of molded you to you that. You could have, but it wouldn't have been the same quality right, that you're right, putting right. it out now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure yeah. What you're saying. For sure. sure. Everything yeah. takes man, time. Man. Yeah. You got anything else, bro? You want to? Nah, man. I just, I just yeah. want to say I really appreciate you, bro, for sure. Man, for man thanks for having me. I am zooed in. <laughs> no. <laughs> Episode Thank y'all 40, for you feel me? me man. Hey, bro, good looking episode out, bro. 40. Absolutely. Are you tap kidding in me? with my yeah. boy, you feel me? This is uh, the, you, the you first episode up. with the guest, you feel me? Yes, We're going to keep doing this and shit. We, we setting gonna... trends, motherfucker. You feel me? <laughs> hey, and that's another one, man. Episode tap in 40, with us. man. Yeah.